The mundane world you know is a lie, fraying at the edges. Follow the echoes of Metropolis. Chase the truth to its source and ascent. You are entering White Walls, a chronicle about Mage the Ascension and the cult of Divinity Lost. Due to adult language and the inviolent nature and adult horror themes of our tales of terror and damnation, we encourage listener discretion. Welcome to Vorpal Tales, where we play terrifying tales and awesome adventures every day of the week. If it's the dark and scary that calls to you, we have Kim She's Grimdark Chronicles playing Black Void on Thursdays and Trinity Continuum Aberrant on Saturdays. If it's a bit of sci-fi intrigue that you fancy, we have Cyberpunk Red on Mondays and Tales from the Loop on Wednesdays. If it's fantasy you crave, we have Scarred Lands on Fridays. If you need more Mage, we're currently playing Mage Victorian Era on Tuesdays. Be sure to check out our website, VorpalTales.com, to see our complete calendar. See recaps of shows and get the links to our past archive shows on YouTube. And soon, podcast links. You will also find links to all our social media here and our Patreon. Be sure to click follow on Twitch so you can get notified of shows. And if you check out the YouTube archive, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell. All new and current Twitch followers will be entered into a drawing for a free PDF of any of our past games once we hit the next double O on Twitch. Special thanks to Onyx Path Publishing and White Wolf for gifting us the World of Darkness and all the support they offer. And to Helmgast and Bodivius for gifting us the newest version of Cult of Infinity Lost. Thanks to Astral Tabletop for the awesome virtual space we use to play all our games. To at Nate Mid from right here at Horrible Tales for our custom Astral Tabletop character sheets that you all can use too to play this game on Astral Tabletop. Thanks to Dark Somnia Music, Darren Curtis Music, and Savic Music for providing some of the sounds you will hear in this chronicle. And to Helmgas for letting us use the Divinity Original Sin soundtrack. Links to these products will appear in chat momentarily. Awaken Seekers of Enlightenment, tell us who you are and who you're playing in this story. Hello everybody, I am Steve. You can find me on the internet at Voodoo Arcade, and tonight I am playing Drake Jones. Uh, the punching mage. The way he throws fists is magical. And sandwiches. <laughs> hey everybody, I'm Ever. My pronouns are they, them. And tonight I will be playing Gabriel, the time mage, whose pronouns are he, him. And he is part of the cult of ecstasy. Hi, my name is Eric, and uh, you can find me at Moron Recluse on Twitter, and tonight I will be playing Jose Vega, the Catholic priest and member of the Celestial Chorus. Uh, hello, my name is Rachel. You can find me in Stolen Fires pretty much everywhere, and I will be playing Sophie, the Hollow One Mind Mage. Uh, saving the best for last. My name is. You can find me. My name is Jared. I will be. You can find me at Real Life Jared. Um, on pretty much anywhere, and I'll be playing Leo, the uh, dream speaker. Wow, I almost forgot that. <clears throat> if you had more pineapple in your life, you wouldn't forget these things, especially <laughs> on pizza. Ever. Oh what? Now for the audience and for Five Knuckle Rocket over there, please recap last session. Five Duckle Rocket. Yeah, he was busy playing End Times. He needs to recap too. Which is an awesome game. <laughs> Five Knuckle Bullet. No, Rocket. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Prologue shot. A woman enters a study, glancing at the endless pages of mad text. She stands in front of an antique floor-to-ceiling black glass mirror, then moves to a nearby bookshelf in an antique folio book. She summons shadows to her within the mirror, and then leaves with the book. A shadow leaves through another wall. Back to the players. Daddy's home! He's quite angry and uses magic to silence Leo. Drake gets dragged out of the room by one of the cousins. Sophie and her uncle bicker a bit over finding Genevieve's killer before the uncle leaves the room in disgust. One of Sophie's coven cousins, covens, cousins reveals that when Genevieve was cut off from her quintessence, she turned to more mundane intoxicants. Her brother isn't quite sure where she got her hookup, but probably not the club scene. 
Sophie attempts to call one of her counterculture contacts, but thanks to the power of botch, she ends up texting heart emojis to Leo in an insult to her contact. Oops. Meanwhile, the chandelier is still vibrating with the anger of the trapped spirit. Father Vega manages to calm Genevieve down, who confirms that Desi did not kill her before he releases her back into the underworld. The consortium of mages takes their leave, accidentally forgetting to bring drink. But Sophie suggests he ask Alexa for a ride back, so he might be busy for a while too. We, see, we swing by Genevieve's dorm at Miskatonic University, seeing a strange plethora of hitchhikers. We decide to pick one up, you know, because that's a good idea, giving a ride to an androgynous college kid. There's something strange about this kid's spirit. They're not exactly mortal. Leo peers at the newcomer and picks up things like bright emerald green eyes, strange fantasy clothing, and pointed ear tips. Suddenly, colors seem a lot more vibrant to Leo, and Gabriel, who perceives this person's full elven nature. He very nearly gets into an accident before our new friend does something to slow down time. Sophie feels strangely innervated at this, as our new friend introduces themselves as Tam. Sophie gets frustrated at the riddle that this person presents, and decides to use her mind magic to pick up on Tam's surface thoughts. Meanwhile, Leo decides to flirt with Tam and gets their phone number. Ooh la la. The more Leo flirts, the more he realizes he's actually into it. But then, Sophie breaks into their mind. They seem unfazed by Sophie breaking into their mind and decide to enchant everyone. Sophie's mind is blown as she gets to glimpse into the dreaming and watches a changeling motley enter the Peabody Memorial Building. Once we get over our minds on glamour, we swing by Genevieve's dorm room where we are confronted by... a locked door. Gabriel uses his correspondence to find the door's spare key, which somehow made its way beneath the couch of a boy's dorm. They must then overcome a college frat bro's love of video games to retrieve the key. The pair of them return to find Sophie and Leo negotiating the forming of a polycule involving Tam. Success. Not the polycule, but getting into the dorm room. It's a mess. Sophie tries to look for anything important as she puts some of Genevieve's belongings in a knapsack. Leo tries to recontact Genevieve with an assist from Gabriel, but the gauntlet here is thick and Leo cannot bring the spirit across, only communicate sporadically. Leo asks who killed her. No limits, invitation only. And card is in room, lost, are the responses. She also says something about being hunted and requiring purpose, some kind of allusion to what's going on in the spirit world. We only get all burns in the inferno before the spell breaks. Sophie uses a Jedi mind trick on the security guard to buy some more time for the other mages, at the expense of some poor student going on academic probation when security finds their weed stash. Gabriel begins a challenging ritual to look for this card. He is able to throw his awareness back in time, just enough to learn about Genevieve's deteriorating condition, and focuses on a box of razor blades. Vega remembers a box like this when he was cleaning. It has a logo of a bleeding lily and seems to be a sexual reference of some kind. Vega opens the box and realizes two blades are missing. Stamped onto the blades is the phrase, no limits. Sophie and Vega race to cut each other with the magic razors. They transform into metallic business cards giving a time and an address. After reading, they revert to dull razor blades. The mages return to the Chantry and manage to determine that no limits and our new changeling friends may somehow be connected. Sophie uses the sentient computer to obtain some basic information about the Fae, including that they eat emotions. Vega determines that the Fae are supernatural aliens from a place called Arcadia in the Dreamlands. Somehow, 
The Fae here are trapped. Something having to do with why mundane reality is now separate from spiritual realities. We conclude there's only one solution. It's time to get pretty and go party with the Fae. We encounter two bouncers, a tall trans person and a diminutive woman wearing fishnets and pain. They allow us to jump the line. Just as the door closes, Father Vega realizes that the small woman is neither fae nor mage. She is Nefandi. Now, well, well, I would add one more thing because I love character moments. In the race to decide who gets to cut themselves with the razor, Father Vega pulled his sleeves up and everyone saw that Father Vega has a history of such self harm. Interesting for a man of the cloth. Scars all the way up beyond visible range of the sleeve. And now, once again, the camera moves away from the party momentarily. I apologize to our chronicler. This one's longer. The morning was pleasant. The air was crisp, but not overly cold. The sky was a clear and lovely blue, casting shimmering sunlight on the streets of Argo. The old historic buildings cast avenues of looming shade, presenting an air of mystery and antiquity. Perfect day to enjoy planning a murder. A young woman of perhaps her late 20s was doing just that. She was in no particular hurry, though. And since it was such a lovely morning, she decided to enjoy the ambience of Arkham as she laid out her plans. This morning, she had been strolling down Witcher Avenue, a tree-lined street that bordered the college quarter. Witcher Avenue was lined with large oaks, and mostly pedestrian traffic traveled at this time of the morning with the occasional bicycles. Cars were few and far between. She had found a lovely cafe with outdoor seating, and now sat with a warm cup of coffee in her hands. Her Doc Martin boots kicked firmly up to the table, and a lit cigarette billowing smoke into the air. The barista of the cafe took issue with this, however. The petite whisper of a woman with long red hair and gripping emerald eyes and fishnets and a leather jacket, he thought this would be a simple matter to handle. Exiting the cafe and heading to her table, he puffed up his chest. Hey, you can't put your feet on the table and you can't smoke here, the young man announced. The young woman languidly, languidly scanned the young man from head to toe. She took a long swallow from her cup, finishing off the drink. Well, Mr. Coffee, last I heard, the customer is always right. So why don't you go back into your little store there and comb your beard? Look, lady, you finished your coffee, and that means you're not a customer anymore. Sleeve, he demanded. Those green eyes fixed on him as she took in another deep drag of her cigarette and blew the smoke directly into his face. Oh, I am still a customer. I would actually very much like a refill, she announced, and batted the empty coffee cup to the ground. Go ahead and pick that up and go refill it. Oh, and while you're at it, give me a new cup with my fucking name spelled right. Jeez, it's a simple name and you managed to fuck it up. Are you a, uh, insert the R word here, or something? The look that took over the man's face was almost hilarious, and the young woman had to struggle not to burst into laughter. However, she wasn't quite done yet, and didn't want to spoil the show. Instead, she applied her most impish smile and began to speak to him in an even far more condescending tone than before. Go ahead, pick it up, Mr. Coffee. Pick it up and go refill it. Or did they not teach your refills when you went to Barista University? My name is not Mr. Coffee, my name is Perry, he responded in anger. That did it for her. It was simply too much to ignore. She could no longer hold in the laughter. <laughs> Perry? Your name is Perry? Oh my god, I wish I had been recording this on my phone. Fucking Perry the coffee man laying down the law. Oh, Perry, you're just too much. Now for the last time, pick up my cup and go refill it. Perry couldn't take any more. He'd grown up being ridiculed about his name. All of middle school, he was known as Scary Perry. Not really too terrible. High school, though, that was a different ball game. In high school, he'd been known as Perry the Fairy. He'd barely gone a day without hearing some sort of insult about his first name. And now, this woman to come here refused to tip, refused to listen, and finally to laugh at his name that was new. Perry moved forward, intending to knock her feet off the table. 
He was determined to show her just who his boss around here. He stepped towards her, but never had a chance of touching her. As soon as his arm gave the slightest twitch in her direction, Harry suddenly felt his entire right side explode in agony. Somehow, in what could not have been a fraction of a microsecond, this adorable little redhead had reached up and grasped a very obscure nerve cluster on Harry's lower torso. She applied enough force to essentially paralyze that side of his body. In doing so, he hunched over the table for support, and she continued to grasp her twist, sending wave after wave of pain beyond description racing through his body. She took a quick glance up and down the street, and was beyond pleased to see that she and Perry still pretty much had the morning to themselves. From a distance, she imagined that his pose over the table would just appear to be a waiter taking an order from a customer. This made her happy. This meant that she could take her time with Perry here, really enjoy the moment. Now, Perry, you were very, very rude to me. I tried so hard to be sweet, too. You just had to come out here and ruin our time. So me. Now, I do believe you owe someone an apology. Don't you agree? Perry was grunting heavily as sweat poured down his face. He was in a state of shock that this situation had developed into madness so suddenly. He could barely process the physical pain he was in, and the sense of confusion and panic was only making things worse. I'm... I'm sorry, please let me go, was all he could muster. The woman smiled and laughed again. Oh, don't apologize to me, Perry. You can never insult me. You're far too insignificant to even warrant an apology. You weren't even an insect in my world. As she scolded, she applied more force to the nerves, causing Perry to jerk and go into muscle spasms in his legs. Perry, it's not me you owe the apology to. It's my boots. I mean, they've served me so well for so many years, always keeping my feet nice and dry, always lacing up just right. You have the nerve to tell me I shouldn't display them on your table. Perry, Perry gasped, but could produce no words. His face was becoming a bright red. She released a bit of pressure. She didn't need him passing out before she was done, after all. With the reduction in pressure, Perry was able to speak again. I'm sorry I insulted your boots. Please let me go. She smiled. Well, Perry, you're in luck. My boots want to be your friend. In fact, they want to commemorate this new era of peace with a kiss. Go ahead, Perry. Kiss them. Kiss them and tell them you accept their friendship. Perry hesitated for a moment. He reviled germs, and even though, even through all of this pain and agony, the thought of being humiliated was too much. Until she applied another sharp grasp of pressure. I said, kiss my boots, Perry. He complied. She laughed and pointed. Finally, it was over. Good boy, Perry. Now, before I let you go, I just need to dispose of this cigarette. I'd hate to litter your lovely little sidewalk. So... You're going to open your mouth and eat it for me, okay? Without waiting, she applied the highest level of pressure yet, bringing him all the way down to his knees. His mouth was hanging agape from the pain, and she took the opportunity to dispose of the still-lit cigarette into his mouth. He gagged and attempted to spit it back, but she clasped her other hand over his mouth. Swallow, she ordered in a voice that contained no humor, no sarcasm. Perry followed the command. Now, oh, Perry, I do hope that you learned something about customer service today, she cooed, releasing her grip. Slowly, Perry backed away, back towards his store. Couldn't walk with his right leg, but was doing a fairly admirable job of limping backwards, using the tables for support. I'm calling the cops. Fucking psycho bitch. Oh, Perry, you didn't learn anything, did you? She responded. With a speed that defied all logic was suddenly standing behind him. Harry could feel a very sharp blade pushing into his back. Please, I... She drove the knife in deep two times, once through his back and into his kidneys. That one was just to hurt, to ensure his last moments of life were agony. The second stab went through his back and into his heart. She made control of his body and sat him down in the chair that she had been occupying. She removed the knife and sheathed it. She propped a menu into Perry's dead hands and pushed him downward, giving the appearance that he was just a man studying the menu closely. The guys would work for a while. I'll get that refill myself, Perry, she announced. Coffee in hand, she turned the open sign around in the shop door to the closed position and then shut the door. 
She walked past Perry's corpse and dropped a dollar on the table in front of him. After all, she had places to be. There were special guests coming to the club tonight. She wanted to meet them at the door. On her way past, she looked at the dead body. Well, gee, Perry, look at that. You were worth a tip after all. Oh. The scene returns to the party. Didn't have to end that on a pun. <laughs> yes, I did. Look at the look at this in this game. Look at all, look at all the joy that generated. <laughs> <laughs> a true supervillain ends on a pun. Oh, jeez. Blew Ever's mind. <laughs> so. When last we left, the door had swung shut, Father Vega looking back going, Oh shit, as the real world closed away on you. And the club enveloped you. You turn and look, and uh, at the end of the small entranceway is a rotunda with hallways like spokes of a wheel going off of it. In the rooms, full of light and sound and shadow, but no way to discern what was happening from where you're standing. I just kind of started to hit it. Um, is there like a bunch of people around us? There's no one in the entryway, and there's no one in the rotunda. Okay. Ugh. I don't like this music. God. Who listens to this? Really? I kind of think it's awesome! Uh, no. I'm good. That's great music. Mm, not my thing. Ugh. I like a little bit more of a... Have you... I like something a little bit more, I don't know, with guitars and stuff. Yeah, yeah, we get it. You're an Enya fan. <laughs> Enya fan. <laughs> You want to know what? They got great music. They had a new single come out recently. It's amazing. Let's not lose sight of why we're here, okay? And let's not get split up. We need to stay together. Yeah, you're right. Would you like to inform the party of what you saw, Father Vega? Because no one else knows yet. Uh, if we're the only ones here, then I'll quietly relay that to them. Uh, assuming they know what I'm talking about when I say that wasn't the person back there that was nor was it a changeling of any sort. It was a Nefandi. Say what? That possible? Which, what, by what? the way, the first thing you all want to know is how can you tell just by looking at it? Uh, also, as a reminder, uh, Drake, you are here because they woke you up at the end of the session. They're like, get up. We don't care how much weird sex you have today. Put this on. We're going to the club. And you're like, what? Why? And they filled you in on the way, but you're like, yeah, sure, I need a copy. All right, sounds good. So, yes, your question, your, well, you know, in the question in your heads would be, how can he tell just by looking? But this is not the first time he's done that. Our character, what's in the fandy? The mage whose soul Terror has evil. been... The mage whose soul has been torn out and voluntarily and reinserted into their body in a way that is completely negative. Gotcha. Okay. So, very, very evil mage. Cool. There's a difference between, like, an evil bad guy mage and the Vandy, and that Vandy is irredeemable, disgusting, vile evil. As you can probably tell from that intro. Cool. <laughs> okay. Well, Father Vega, um, hot. And you would all also know, and there, there's a policy in you know, the nine traditions in the family. Shoot on sight. Shoot on sight, right. You don't try to save them. Um, Father Vega, obviously it's because your soul is with your Sliante. <laughs> you can tell, kindred souls. Yeah. Carry on. Well... If this lady isn't a fandy, she's obviously powerful, so I don't think going up there and just smacking her in the mouth is a great idea. Why not? No. She's just, a, she's just a little wisp of a thing with red hair and stunning emerald eyes and dark markets and fishnets. What could possibly go wrong? He will curb stomp you so hard, Leo. No it shit. It should be... <laughs> if nothing else, it should prove as a warning that we need to watch ourselves in this place. It's going to be very dangerous. This is her... 
own domain, which is probably going to fuck with our heads a little bit. So, let's see. Like, to be clear, I don't think she's the only one. Also, how do you know it's her domain? You don't know that. She's bouncer, as far as you know. Yeah, well, she's more familiar than we are with it. So, I guess we should act at least act that way. Just a thought. The way your head would actually work would be, if that's the bouncer, who the fuck owns this place? Oh, God. Right. <laughs> good point. That's a very good point. Who does own this place? Did we do any research on any of that stuff? Not much to go by. <laughs> yeah, uh, we didn't turn up that much. That's why we're here. Point. Well. Actually, I'm going to read that thing you posted, Rachel. What blog is this from so we can give credit? Oh, uh, it is from uh, Vampires of San Francisco. It hasn't updated in a while, but it's a really cool uh, record of um, a vampire game in San Francisco. Thank you. Good description of Nefandi for the players and the audience. Nefandi are mages who have gone off the deep end. Not just gone crazy, but have actually become forces of destruction and despair. There's a long, rich list for the question of who's the most evil motherfucker in the world of darkness. The Vandy have a very strong case for being number one at the top of the list. They have perverted their own avatars to dissension rather than ascension. They literally want to watch the world burn, and they have the power to do it. Yeah. Damn. Okay. If Andy, you would all you all have one dot in it and just you're taught enough to know your foe and not enough to know the truth of everything, but their goal is to the go, their goal is to change reality to the point that the world succumbs to oblivion. The only way to do that is to, in their opinion, is to make the vast majority of humans on the planet want to succumb to oblivion. How do you make the humans on the planet want to succumb to oblivion? You make them give up hope. So how do you make Six billion humans give up hope by doing the most heinous, vile things possible to them to break them down. There are no limits. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm going to assume that the owner is an Afandi if everyone in here is an Afandi. That's... You also don't know that everyone in here is everyone... Father Vegas said the one the bouncer one... was. <laughs> not the other bouncer, not the crowd, just the one little wispy, frail redhead girl. Okay. Okay. I'm just being careful, all right? I don't want to end up... That's another thing we can point out for players and the audience. Anything in the world of darkness, werewolf, vampire, changeling, mage, doesn't matter, is extremely rare. We, we You can get lost with that in a game because at least three of you, usually as many as five or six, the party. They're like, man, if we're this big, of course they're everywhere. No, 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 no. You're probably going to run into more mages in Arkham than are in New York City, that are in the East Coast. I think I read somewhere once that the estimate of vampires to city was 1 to 100,000. So, hmm. an entire club full of Nefandi is a nightmare scenario, because it's basically everyone on the planet in one building, or at least in the continental U.S. in one building. Definitely not likely. <laughs> okay. Well then, guys, what do you think we should do then? Blend in. Um, we need to find out what happened here with um, with the vi- with, well, with the victim for one, and to find out what happened to her. We need to find out exactly who did this to her. This is where her journey began, and quite possibly where it ended too. What is the dance floor situation in this club? Not a clue because you're still standing in the uh, vestibule and there's a rotunda ahead of you devoid of people with hallways like spokes of a wheel going off into a darkened room full of strobing lights and music but you can't see anything but shadows. Oh, it's not a, there's not an open, cl- oh, I thought we had walked in and we were like, oh, The rotunda okay. is an area that leads to apparently different club rooms. It's very weird. So I definitely have a question. Could I activate my spirit site to see if um, there may be any spirits lurking around that are still connected. Like, if someone, basically I want to know if someone actually died here and if the spirit is still hanging around. Sure. <laughs> Fuck. Roll awareness plus perception. 
Oh, <laughs> wow. I said, sure, we'll roll awareness plus perception. Difficulty four. Okay. No. That's not good. Hey, four is not bad. Difficulty. It's not good when the difficulty is that low. It's like when you're playing a video game and you find a whole bunch of healing potions. Exactly. <laughs> That's a good sign. <laughs> Alright, what was it? Perception and what? Awareness. Oh god, okay, yeah, this may be a bad idea, but we'll see what happens. I really need to put points in awareness. <laughs> Alright, I got... Three. So remember those cool new things we added to your sheet for this game? Ability and your yep. cognitions. Yes. Uh, list me your cognitions. Uh, cognitions. I have instinct, animal kingship, awareness. No, with, with the dots. Oh, clarity is three, rationality is two, balance is five. It'll be nice and let you roll balance. Difficulty nine. <laughs> oh my god. Oh God! The guys, he's, he's being kind. Idea. Remember, <laughs> he is being kind. Okay. Um, okay. Can I? Don't I don't have a like a little box next to it. Bonus dice added his bonus dice. Oh, okay. Or just click enough stuff to get five dice with other uh, the attributes and abilities. Bonus dice. I'm not seeing a bonus dice. Okay. All right. So, what do I need to do? I'm not. I'm not seeing bonus dice in here. So, what do I got to do now? Just click whatever you need to to get five dice. Okay. Um, what dice is it? It's always D10s. Just click two things on your sheet that total five dots. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you. So, alertness. There you go. Difficulty nine. Roll dice. Difficulty nine. That's crazy. Holy shit, I got one success. <laughs> you don't lose any stability, but you lose... I'm sorry, you don't lose any uh, balance. You lose one point of stability. It's now nine. Okay. That's not good. Your mind is flooded with emotion. At first, they're enjoyable visions you're seeing. Uh, people having a good time, people getting high, people in ecstasy, people experiencing positive emotions. And then people are having sex. And then it's an orgy. And then it devolves into fetishism. Then it devolves into something else entirely involving pain and sharp objects, blunt instruments. And then it becomes to a point where you can't tell the difference between whether the people are enjoying it or it's hurting them. Like there's no difference between the pain and the pleasure, it's all just sensation. Then there's death. How many people have died in this part of the building? Hundreds. Maybe more. How many spirits are trapped here? just uh, ghosts, which is basically like a repeat. An endlessly repeating vision of what happened here caught in time, not a sentient spirit. Because all the spirits have been dragged away. You, get a vi you, you see visions of doors in this building. Doors that when you open them don't lead to rooms or closets. They re lead to endless, dark, black labyrinths of stone and suffering. If some giant thing shaped like sharpened triangles spinning in the middle, covering everything in waves and pulses of anti-light. And you see endless wasted bla endless blasted wastelands of pain and suffering, molten lava, burning fire. People trapped in their own endlessly repeating eternal torments. Their own purgatories, one might say. You may increase your awareness by one of the inferno the inferno yes you can never again gain awareness due to learning about the inferno <laughs> your awareness is now too nice <laughs> to the rest of you 
he says, hold on, I'm going to see if there's any spirits to communicate with here. And he just kind of goes slack-jawed for like a minute. And huh. you're like, are you, are you okay? And then he just starts screaming. Kill you. And then he, colla <laughs> oh, he collapses in, He collapses in, into a grand ball seizure. Uh, so my instinct normally would be get out of here, but there's an Afandi on the other side of that door. So I'm going to try dragging Leo into one of the darkened corridors that you mentioned earlier. Shit so terrifying. your instinct would be to look at the door on reflex, bolt for it. There's no door. It's just another hallway you're in. <laughs> Shit. There's no going oh, back. God. The only right. way out is through. Come on, Leo, on your feet. I get up and I gr you grog. You can't get up. You're, you are I'm, literally having a grand mal seizure. I'm, oh. I'm going to roll <laughs> my <laughs> shot in medicine. Do it. Medicine plus uh, your choice of wits or intelligence would be better. They're about the same. Okay. Which Dealer's choice then. Two. <laughs> Difficulty six. One success. One success is enough to roll him over and do the appropriate measures to make sure he doesn't hurt himself, doesn't choke on his tongue, etc. Uh, you make sure that he's not actually like going to uh, damage any muscles or ligatures or anything like that. And you tell everyone, we just have to help him ride about out here, help me hold this part still so he doesn't hurt himself, and you do so. And about three minutes later, it subsides. And he curls up into the fetal position, and just like silently, silent tears pouring out of his eyes. You can talk now. Hi. Oh I pat him on the head and I go, Sana Sana Colita de Rana. So, oh, this place is fucked up. Holy shit. Right. This what place happened? is fucked up. So many people Thank have you. died here. You're welcome. <laughs> the, the, it starts out. It starts out good. All right. People are having so much fun, getting high, doing their thing. Then after, it gets a little bit more intense. They start having sex, orgies, fetishes stuff, stuff like that. And then it gets way, way darker. Things start to turn to more, obviously more sex, but then pain. And then I got to the point where I didn't know if someone was I didn't know if someone was dying or if they were loving what they were having. It was so fucked up. And then I saw oh, a landscape just, it was like oblivion. It, it was fucking nuts. Oh. I mean, you had me up until the dying part. It sounds like a Friday night. <laughs> oh, the Friday night times 2000. It was fucking terrible. Jesus fucking Christ. I want to get out of here as much. Oh my. I want to get out of here as fast as fucking possible. Let's, let's, let's get this done. Oh God. I'm not fucking with the spirits here, guys. Just saying. Wise. There are no spirits here. Place. It's just ghosts reliving everything they've gone through. It's literally torture. And I just kind of well, like sit down out and I take a breath and I'm like, wherever there is an offendi, there's pain and death are sure to follow. Come on, on your feet. I get up. All right. Can I pet your emotional support, Coyote? He <laughs> just, you know. Because your emotional cross. support, Coyote, is not here because we don't, we don't <laughs> arm animals on Warp of Tales. Okay, here Real we go. Real or imagined? Um, oh, it's not imagined. It's a legit uh, Coyote. It's just got a spirit inside of it that's sentient. <laughs> oh, I see. Uh, I say a blessing before we all go in. And I'm sorry. I mean, I, dog. Just a weird dog. 
it's a dag. I mean, it's, uh. it's a coyote because she calls it a dog, and it's a test pe for people who can say, like, that is clearly a coyote. You are fucking with me. Hmm. Coyote. I'll say a blessing, and then he'll uh, lead the, the rest of the group down the hallway. One of uh, which hallway. one? There are. Which I don't know, one? I there, one. <laughs> there are. Uh, hold on. Uh, Sophie will make a gesture of deflection. Five. Blessing. Five hallways. Okay, make us used to it. I don't want your god to notice me. There's a hallway directly ahead of you. Well, directly behind you. That's the one you can, you're in. Then there's, uh, if you looked dead ahead from where you're at, there'd be one to the northwest, one to the northeast, one to the southwest, one to the southeast. Is there more hallways? Uh, yep. Four, direct, four cardinal directions? Five, because you're in one. <laughs> make a, make, so, make a, make a, make a, roll. Father Vega. Mm -hmm. Plus intelligence, difficulty five. I believe. Can I do so, enigmas to look to figure out the, like, the puzzle of this place? Well, the devil is usually associated with a southerly direction. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he did go down to Georgia. <laughs> I botched. I got zero. Mm -hmm. Yes, oh, you may roll with, enigmas with plus intelligence, Drake. <laughs> Father Vega's like, this whole place is evil. <laughs> and just start, and just like, takes a swig of holy water. This will protect me. <laughs> Difficult. Or this. Five. It's obvious, but not overly obvious. So it's not hard. One success. It's an inverted pentagram. Okay. And the rotunda is the middle. What I assumed. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, very, I, very I, gauche. <laughs> yeah, I quickly passed that along, just, you know. Um, so, it, uh, <clears throat> yeah, if, uh, yeah, that's the shape of this place seems to be, you know, pretty, uh, pretty interesting architectural design, so if anyone knows any more about that whole scene, you know, that'd be pretty cool, if, you know. Any of those points mean something, you know, like, uh... uh Pentagram? Yeah, I don't know, you know, I don't know a whole lot about that stuff. I'm, I never got into it, you know? So, uh... Sure uh what I know... things at different points in different halls. Would I know the answer to Drake's questions? There's not inherently... I mean, obviously, if you, if you dig deep enough, people have signed meetings to the directions of the Pentagram, but... Inherently, it's not, it doesn't really mean anything. You feel more like, for some reason, there's five clubs inside the one club. And they decided, we're going to make it an upside down pentagram because that's edgy. <laughs> doesn't okay. seem like it has actual major significance. All right. Uh, Sophie will uh, convey that, but then say, like, but who knows what sort of paradigm is being invoked here. Right. Gosh. It's obviously part of the paradigm. That's not invoked, correct. Okay. All right. Um, are there other club goers like moving up and down these halls? Because I assume it's one of those scenarios nope. where you buy one band and you get no. No one has entered any of the, the, the. No one has entered the rotunda in the five minutes you've been standing here, or come in behind you. But there's no door behind you anymore. So obviously, when you pass through the door, you move into an extra dimensional space. Maybe it's our own personal hell now. Yeah, there are people here, fun. you can hear them in those rooms. You just can't see what's in those rooms unless you go in or get closer. Well, let's flip the coin. I think we should go in where the people are. At least we'll be able to ask somebody what's going on here. Yeah, I point, to the closest, I point to the closest door. Why not that one? Yep. Why yeah, not? that would be southeast or southwest. They're equally close. Southeast. Sure. Southeast. Okay. Uh, you head down the hallway to the southeast, and it gets darker and darker until it's pitch black for, like, just a second. And then it lights up. And for that second, it's pitch black, though. Everything disappears. Sound. Everything. Hmm. The thumping subsides. And 
the hallway opens up into kind of looks like a dive bar. Hmm. There's people in here sitting at tables. There's a dartboard. There's pool tables. It's not playing any music. Bartender. Straight up uh, looks like a villain from the 70s. Slicked back black hair. A pointy uh, mustache you know, down on his chin. and Goatee only. Black, dark eyes, tall, looming. Looks very much like he would go. <laughs> hmm. Cool. Weird. Dressed impeccably in a black vest, black shirt, black pants. Interesting bartender. Looks, for a looks British. Hmm. I'll, uh, oh, I'll take the patrons. I the patrons are an eclectic bunch. None of them are paying any attention to you. Like, it's a huge variety of humankind. Yeah, I'm the vast go majority to... of which are alone at tables. And that's the next interesting thing is there seems to be no end to the tables. It's like the room is enlarged into infinity. Um, I have uh, I have two dots of life. Are these people alive? Hmm. Uh, you gonna activate your life sense? I'm gonna say that with a smile no matter what you ask me in this club. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably a really bad idea, but uh, I think it's a less bad idea than activating mind. <laughs> uh, all of the life signs in here except the bartender are there but weak. Okay, we should be back. Glitch. Okay. Freaking glitch. So no, we'll 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 start back with the sentence where we think we broke. Are you sure you'd like to activate your life sets? Uh, yeah. Uh, it's probably a bad idea, but a less bad idea than activating spirit. Uh, so yes. Okay. Um. All the life forms except the bartender and yourselves are weak and sluggish, but there. Yours are strong, but sluggish. And the bartender is indeterminate. Okay, so... It's a living entity, least. but it's not alive in the way you are. Okay. I would like to walk up to him. He looks at you, and in a very not British accent, actually kind of a high-pitched, greedy voice, says, Can I get you a drink? Yeah, that sounds great. I'm gonna have... Ooh, what do you have? Oh, no, wait. Uh, I want something... I want something pink and sparkly. Do you have that? Uh, I'll take a... a top shelf uh, old-fashioned, please. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. We don't, we don't serve old-fashioned here. But I could get you a uh, loneliness or a despair or if you're really feeling spicy, I could get you a damnation. Uh, come again? What's in the damnation? <laughs> alcohol. Like you think, Zinni. Obviously. What kind of alcohol is it? What's it combined Damnation. <clears throat> I'll take a damnation. Okay. He pulls a bottle off the shelf that is labeled damnation. Hellfire on the sticker. Do they have a tarnation? <laughs> you don't see a tarnation. I'm disappointed. Uh, I go, I go up to the bartender, and I'm just, I don't order a drink or anything. But uh, Vega takes his phone, and assuming he has a picture of, um, blanking on her name right now, Sophie's cousin, he kind of just puts that on the table and is like looking for a friend of mine. Uh, you pull out your phone and set it on the table. Looking for a friend of why is my phone? Fuck. Oh. So we have um, a picture, picture. I don't know if anyone does or not. As for we'll ask Sophie. As Sophie. for uh, Sophie. 
he uh, mixes the damnation with some other ingredients and slides it across to you. It's got an olive in it. Okay. Uh, I have life, mind, and spirit. Uh, all at least at one. I'm focusing all of my magical attention on this drink to try and figure out what actually is inside of it. Roll perception plus awareness. Difficulty six. Oh, this will be fun. Okay. Uh, perception. Why did I not buy any awareness? That was a mistake. Okay, let me type it into the roller. That is one success. Two. Two successes. Okay. Um, no poison. Mm -hmm. uh, it is magical, but that's because you realize everything is to some degree or other is magical. Correspondence, matter, time, and uh, entropy. Some things are far more energetic than others. It's got alcohol okay. in it and a variety of other ingredients that list across it. Your internal readout, like chemical ingredients, none of them seem hazardous. And it doesn't seem to have malicious magic. There's no, like, mind control magic in there that you okay. can see. I'll take a sip and. It's fucking delicious. Do a, a internal inventory on how it affects me. Fucking delicious. You want more. Probably not a good idea to overindulge on the damnation. You think about that for your second, but, uh, and in a second you're like, of course damnation is delicious and you want more. Hey bartender, can I smoke in here? You can indulge in whatever vice you would like, your son. Okay, well I take my lighter out and I uh, take my joint and start puffing on it. Actually no, I take my pipe out, stuff some uh, marijuana in there and start puffing on my pipe. Can I? Yeah. So, oh. so, uh, Alistair Crowley, right? I would like whatever drink has whatever title that I don't really give a damn about. That no, just you tells have to pick. Pick your emotion. He displays the wall. <laughs> there aren't any happy emotions there. I, I'm, I'm. There's, I, I'm just. Would you must you... pick. No, I mustn't. Well, then I'm sorry. You don't. I'm not going to be able to serve you a drink. Perception plus alertness, by the way. I mean, Difficulty uh, the, seven. The damnation's pretty damn good. I don't recommend any of you buy anything that they're offering here. They would be unwise to do so. I don't really drink alcohol. Do you feel different, Sophie? Uh, Minor I buzz. feel like I am well on my way to getting sloshed on damnation. Ooh, I don't think I want to be sloshed. Ooh, three. That is, yep, successes. three successes. Uh, there's a lot of emotions on that shelf. I wonder what's on tap. That's weird. Normally when you go into a bar, there's like three spigots for the tap. Yeah, you know, well, plus how are, if, there, if there's one thing on tap, there's usually three spigots, right? So there's two spigots plus tap. It's normally how it works in a bar. You only see one spigot plus what's on tap. Something's missing. Hmm. So... Bartender, what do you got uh, for beer? Do you got any beer? He gestures towards the emotions. Pick your poison, sir. Okay. Hmm. What were you about to say, Gabriel? How do you mix your drinks? Uh, my fine <laughs> bartender. He gestures person. towards his, all of his mixing equipment. He just used for Sophie's drink. It's all the normal stuff. Yeah, but, but what about but what about your tap there? 
What about Look it? That. What's what's uh, what what comes out of there exactly? He points at the taps that are alcoholic and says, "The beer version of all the emotions. These are hard liquor emotions. These are beer emotions, and then uh, soda." Interesting. Okay. Seems like there should be another tap. I mean, it's one of those that's so obvious you can't think of it things. It's got tap, alcohol, and soda. Hmm. Something's fucky. Something I think we should yep. go to one of the other rooms. Sophie. This one's boring. That drink is fucking delicious, but it's really dry like a gin. You're thirsty. I sit down at the table with one of the patrons and set the tables. Uh, could I try the damnation beer? Absolutely! He taps one out for you. Just as delicious, but, you know, more like a... It's actually less like a beer and much more like a, uh, ale. Tell me how that is, Sophie, because I'll try it if it's good. I just don't want to be the first one to do it. It's really good. But do you want to sip? No, this is mine. Get your own. Doesn't doesn't help with the thirsty bit, though. (laughs) Drake, you sit down at the random table, and there's a lady sitting there. Mm-hmm. And she looks haggard and strung out, not like drugs strung out, but like hasn't slept for sure. a good night's rest in forever. Ashtray in front of her, overflowing with cigarette butts. Mm-hmm. And she's smoking a cigarette. And she keeps choking and making disgusted faces every time she takes a drag. And she's not drinking? No. Okay. Uh, Hi. What? What's your name? can't remember anymore. <coughs> okay. Thirsty. Thirsty? Thirsty. Okay. okay. That's no problem. That's no problem. Well, then how about this? Mm-hmm. How about you give me that, and I'll go to take the cigarette away from her. Freaks out a little and says, no, you can't. Don't do that. Don't do that. Her eyes flick towards the bartender. I, I snatch it from her. Angie? She, like, shudders and pulls another cigarette rapidly lights it puts it in her mouth. Mm-hmm. Good girl. Don't waste your time here, uh, to break. These people are lost. And if we're not, we don't, if we don't watch ourselves, we'll be joining them soon. I, uh, I, I do uh, think we should grab Soph and, uh... You guys, hold on. Adelante, Gabriel. Sophie said that they're not dead. Faint of life, but not dead yet. Angie? Puff. Mm -hmm. Angie, listen to my voice. My name is Drake. I'm from the other side. You are not dead yet. You can still come back. Vega puts a hand on Drake's shoulder like... Hey. Obviously, I'm not dead. Right. So get that out of your mouth, and I'll pull that one away. She actually scoots away from you that time. I mean, I use my physical skills to start pulling this away from her at this point. She lights another one and moves to so, another table. So that okay. So that was my goal. So as soon as I take that one away, I know she's going to start pulling another one. I want to stop snatching the cigarettes, and I snatch her lighter this time. That's my goal. Is to you successfully do so. The cigarette lights itself. Okay. Leave me alone. You're making it worse. Runs to <laughs> another side of the bar. That there are no edges. Uh, I, I'm gonna lean over and whisper to Drake. Drake, I think this is a trauma farm. I think... Yeah, I think you're right. What, are the, what exactly is, is... What exactly are we making worse by doing that? The lighter you're holding? Mm-hmm. Really fancy uh, Zippo. Flip it over. It's got yep. a stamp on it. 1941. Shiny and new. <laughs> Not a bit tarnished. Hmm. So this place go okay. 
these some of these people have been here for a very long time. I'm if and sure. I feed on negative emotions, mm. and I'm pretty the sure the bartender chuckles. There's no Nefandia in this bar. He just looks at him like, sure, there ain't. <laughs> you look at him and sure? he's not in a bandy. I'm, I'm pretty he's sure not. I know. Emotions... I'm pretty sure he's not, but. Say that again, Sophie? I'm pretty sure that the emotions that they're feeling end up in those bottles. Yeah. That's probably why they taste so damn good. I mean, I. I don't think Your I... throat's really dry, Sophie. It actually hurts to talk a little bit. You really need a fucking drink or something that's an alcohol. I don't think you should uh, drink that, Sophie. We should uh, go before I order another cocktail. Yeah, we should probably leave. You don't want a cocktail. You want a goddamn bottle of water. That's what you want. <laughs> and that's when Gabriel goes, that's the tap that's missing. The water. There's no water here. Yep. Um. Does anyone feel like playing a game of limbo cough cough hint hint how does <laughs> limbo isn't the word that pops into your head purgatory <laughs> is Rigatorio. how does one go about making like i have two spheres in water what's my or two spheres in matter what's my <laughs> my uh ability water to make there. water uh you can transform, you can transmute one substance into another. Uh, can you change states to two dots? Uh, I'm going to double check. But I'm pretty sure the answer is yes. But it's a very small amount. That's fine. Yes. But you'd have to turn something else into it. You can't, you don't have enough dots yet to make it out of another. Sophie, do you still have any of your beer left? Uh, yeah, she's barely sipping it. Yeah, she's being cautious. Give me the beer. Hand it over. Can I change it's... that into actual water? Or am I just going to change the texture in the... Well, you try. Your spell is successful. I won't make you roll it out. But it stays alcohol. So you're like, okay. You grab the ashtray. And you try to turn the ashes into water. It doesn't work. You're like, what about if I do this? You try to turn the ashes to charcoal. It does work. Hmm. You can't create water here. Do I notice what's happening? Do we all see? Yes, yes. He, he's probably explaining it as he goes along. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Things don't work the same here in this place. Let's just find all the information that we can while we came here for and try to leave as quickly as possible. Agreed. Okay. Um, do we have a picture of Sophie's cousin? At this you point, know? you may all add a second dot of awareness as you all begin to learn the truth of Inferno. This is called purgatory. Hmm. You have passed beyond your reality through a hallway and or door into apparently a hundred different purgatories merging at one bar. Hmm. Nice. Okay. Do I get another... Do I get three dots then, or...? You don't get any more dots, because you already have a dot for Inferno. Okay. You can only ever get one dot per realm of awareness. To truly ascend, you must become aware of all realms and remain sane. None of you risk sanity, though, oh. because it's a very mild version of purgatory. Not the skill awareness, you mean the attribute awareness. Correct. Ah, got it. Okay. One second. But you guys don't have to roll to avoid screaming in a miserable pile, because this is very mild. You're not seeing any torture here. Okay. This, yeah, this, seems, to be, this seems to be a place where people whose vices were of the addictive sort can meet for, mm. you know, purgatory hangout. <laughs> Jesus. Well, this is obviously purgatory and uh, more of an addictive nature. So do you, what can we really learn from this place? Should we just start 
showing uh, Sophie's cousin's picture to some of these people, say, hey, have you seen these people, seen this lit girl, or? If we have a picture, that is where I would, we would begin, yes. You realize this is not purgatory. Purgatory isn't a place. The inferno is a place. People experience their individual purgatories in the inferno. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Inferno is the place. Purgatory is the experience. Gotcha. She said everything. You all do realize inferno. you've slipped beyond the boundaries of Earth. Yeah, much it's clear. I think. Not in Kansas. This experience is getting more fucked up as we go through. Okay. Name of the game. Uh, uh all of you roll. Willpower. I'm sorry, Arate. Everybody roll Arate. Most successes wins. Difficulty? <laughs> wins. What do we win? Six. I got oh. nada. Give me a minute. My thing didn't work. Oh. Gabriel, wow. I think. Derfed it. Oh, the Vega got none. What about the rest of you starting with Drake? I got, I got... I got one. You're not Drake. Starting with Drake! <laughs> Drake got three. Leo. One. Gabriel. I got it. I got, <laughs> I got a negative one. You botched. <laughs> Fantastic. In this, case, okay, that, in this case, that's good. Sophie? Oh, Q. Drake. You hear a noise over in the corner by a jukebox. It's like somebody's really mad at that jukebox because he can't find the record he wants to play. The voice is really familiar. Dawning realization. That's the voice of your master. Mm. Drake, get over here and fix this thing for me, goddammit. Do the rest of us hear this? Hurry up, kid, before I beat your ass. Yes, you can all hear this. Jesus, who is this kid? Who is this guy, Drake? Do I need to kick his ass for you? I'd like to see you try, bitch. <laughs> yeah, don't have me. Uh, no, no, guys, don't worry, I got this. How? How do you know? All right, so well, many? I'm here if you got if you need backup. How? What? What was that, Tuffy? Everyone's so isolated. How do you know somebody here? Sophie, there's no life to this person. He's dead. No, no. He's not, he's not dead or alive. It's almost like an illusion. Oh, okay. Hmm. Almost um... like a new purgatory is forming. I'll walk over. Sophie, you're the one paying attention to this. You think that's a very bad idea to interact with that thing. Uh, I, uh, you walk over Drake. I, yeah, <laughs> well, Sophie will, will try and grab Drake's arm, and because uh, it still hurts to talk, she's shaking her head no, emphatically no. I don't think you should do this, Drake. I think they're just playing, they're playing tricks with your mind. They're, this place is playing tricks with our Oh, mind. there's no tricks here. Don't worry, you'll find your own soon. Have a drink. Relax while you wait from the bartender. I don't drink alcohol. Thank you, though. And I just, I guess, smoke my pipe and just watch intently. Uh, I've, I've, I've handled him before, you know? We go way back. Not a big deal. It's all cool. Something's changed with Drake. It's like he's younger, smaller, and a lot more bruised. Okay. Can I uh, use my charisma and or expression to try to out uh, father figure <laughs> the master here uh, with little Drake? Do you have any dots in mind? In mind? Yes. No. What spheres do you have besides Prime again? I don't know. Spirit and forces. Spirit's good. How many dots you have in spirit? 
Uno. Okay, so you can roll uh, charisma or manipulation if you're going to be angry about it. No. Plus uh, expression, plus one dot for spirit. I recommend you spend willpower, difficulty eight. I'll spend uh, two willpower. Okay. And well, you can only so the spend difficulty one. is eight? You can only spend one willpower. It's an automatic success. Oh. Difficulty is eight. Shit. That way you don't get less than one success. You can't get none. All right, hold on. Shit. Okay. And roll. Four successes. Wow. Nice. Hi. Tie goes to player. Uh, what's your speech? Because I want to hear what you would say to him. We need to let go of the past, Drake. What you're doing, you're just indulging the forces that want to keep you here. I want to imbibe on your sorrow. You need to let go. Somehow, in this moment, you don't know what it is. It's the way he's looking at you. You're sitting down, he's standing up. Whatever it is, you're actually more impressed by the father than you are intimidated by your old master. The illusion um, doesn't waver, but you understand. Yeah. I, you could get lost in this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll stop and kind of just, like... You know what? Yeah. Dealt with that already. No reason. No reason to show... You already win a fight, you don't go back to do it again. Hope you never find that record. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good to go. I want to leave. So yep, I looking for the exit. exit. You can see the hallway. Well, I go through the hallway. I don't, I don't want to be here anymore. I will follow Leo. Same. Are you going to uh, randomly pick directions? Or just kind of follow the wheel <laughs> in a logical order. Like, in other words, next would be northeast. Just follow the wheel. Sure. Yep. <laughs> okay. Uh, following the wheel northeast does bring you into a club. A bouncing, banging club. Dance floor situation I can give you in here, Drake. It's banging. Mm -hmm. It's big, too. Like, this is r warehouse rave big. Okay. Strobe lights are awesome, but they also make you feel a little queasy. Jesus, at least be fun. All yeah. along the outer walls, people are getting high. People are fucking. Some people are beating each other up, but they seem like they're enjoying it. Okay. And you can see an endless chain of doors going from this main room into other areas of this club. Every now and then a door opens and you see some form of debauchery happening before it slams shut. Hmm. Everyone in here is wearing chains and spikes and leather. Except you. But no one seems to notice if you're not. Well. This is quite the... This is quite the... Uh, at least we see real people this time. Jesus Christ. The life signs in here are strong. Whew. Toby, yes. I actually kind of like this one. Like I said, Friday night. <laughs> Yeah, I'm good. This, this music is terrible, in my opinion. Um, I won't get too comfortable here. Nope. Well. Hold on. I, all right. I don't know if there's a skill or anything you'd want me to roll to actually make this assumption, or if I can just do it. Guys, so, heads up. About me, normally, I'm on the dance floor, right? I'm out there, I'm grooving, doing the thing, right? Showing everyone else how that thing is done. But, let me tell y'all right now. If that place was emotional, right? Dancing, fighting, sex, something about physical stuff going on here. Don't partake, don't dance, no dancing. This is a footloose situation. 
Uh, Father? You're, uh, I think you would be uh, preaching to the you're, choir you're, here. You're, um, I, think it's, I believe it's the road. Uh, you're uh, the, uh, the dad. Who's the dad? Footloose. Tell me out. <laughs> what? I got nothing. I moved too much furniture today. Brain's dead. Was it John Lithgow? That doesn't sound right. Kevin Bacon? <laughs> no. Kevin Bacon was the main character. Was the main character. I know. Dad, you said Footloose. <laughs> Someone help me hey. out. Please. Audience, who is the dad in Footloose? Who is the dad in Footloose? <laughs> uh, that's you, coach, great that's you, Father. What you got? You're no longer the father of whatever church you're from. You're the father from Footloose. Enforcing their dancing. I don't understand the reference, but I understand the implication. Good. You give this speech, and Gabriel's like... And Father Vega's like... But you notice that Sophie and Leo slowly in unison turn their heads away from you as if pulled by something on the dance floor. And you don't, you don't see what they see. There's just 200, 200 people. Sophie and uh, Leo, one dancer stands out from all the rest, right in the center of the dance floor, dancing their heart out. It's Tam. I knew it. <laughs> oh, hey, uh, guys. I think I'm gonna go over here. No! What are you doing? We already had this discussion. Leo, you need to stay here. We need to stay together. Sophie, did you know that Tam's over there? Like, I mean, we, can... we sort of expected to meet him, didn't we? Yeah, he, said, he kind of invited us, didn't he? Alright, all right, look here, lovebirds. Date after mission. Mission first, date is reward later. <laughs> and you gotta figure out your polycule scheduling anyway. You're, so. like, super strict for someone who's supposed to be in the Cult of Ecstasy. I'm just oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Don't uh, use the S word with me, okay? I'm just that's, saying, that's, this that's is kind of your cool. thing. I mean, maybe he knows something. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, mm. Look, we're just there to investigate. And investigate no. D. Okay? I... I don't think this is a good idea. We need to stick together here. Sophie starts getting drawn in by the music. Dancing. Roll balance, no, difficulty place. seven. Sophie, no! <laughs> what? Balance, difficulty seven. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be fun. Oh, let me look uh, at my balance. Okay, I got three balance. I might be okay. No. Let's see what the club rolls. Oh, the club gets a roll. <laughs> yes, it does. To weave its magic into your mind. Okay, waiting for the result to show. Difficulty seven, you said? Yep. One success. One success. Club got three. You weave your way in, and before you get halfway there, you're dancing. Um. So, I know magic is supposed to be more ritual than like quick, quick stuff, but. Three dots. Not always for punch man mage, it's not. Three well, <laughs> right, but this is this is not punch solution. Oh, I'm not gonna punch Sophie <laughs> off the dance floor. <laughs> uh I mean, if you could you know dislocate uh, his hey. shoulder, that might uh <laughs> judo throw her just uh, over the <laughs> Um, Can I at least like direct myself to start oh, yeah. dancing closer to Tam? Okay. You're in control uh, of what you're doing. You just can't not dance. What I'm. I just doing. really okay. want to see Tam at the moment. Dots... Sorry. Go ahead. Uh... I will probably follow her just for Roll that. stability. Oh god. And what is it you want to do with your magic, Drake? Three dots of life. Can right. I? Can I change other people's physical, like? Like, like, can I change their physiology? You mean how they look? No, how their their actual biological. Like, okay, I want to change our ears so that they don't register the 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 frequency that the music comes in at, so we can still hear properly, but we would not hear any music to get drawn into dancing. I want to basically hmm. change how our he ears hear to protect us. Relatively Biological easy for you. <laughs> Relatively easy for you. Hard for the rest of the party, and you'd have to do them one at a time. The group version would be near impossible. Like, you know, difficulty would be nine. Okay. So the two people who seem 
pretty okay at combating this for right now. Um, I'll do mine. He said mine's easy. Can I just do mine right away to make sure that I don't get drawn in? Yes. And again, I won't make you rack the spell up because you successfully do it and you immediately realize, fuck, you can feel the rhythm hitting you through the floor. <laughs> I was, I was going to ask hear a shit, fair question. But it's vibrating you. Okay. Thump, thump, I, thump, I had a mechanics thump. question real quick. If, yes. Would it be easier if Drake were to say, I just use my matter to create more earwax in everybody's ears to dampen the it's actually sound. harder <laughs> is it really yeah huh. because that's just that's technically an attack oh okay whereas you know if they willingly let you shut down a sense all he's really doing is like creating uh turning off the eardrum whereas an excess mm -hmm. of wax can physically hurt them okay yeah so it'd be like weird, I know, but that's still, yeah. It's not. It's not because it's not his approach that it is. It's just that three dots is when you can begin to affect other people, but you can't like mass produce it yet. That's four dots. So okay. it's not his approach. His approach is fine. His idea is great, and it did it did protect you, but not fully because you're still getting hit with vibrations. Anything I can do to stop these vibrations, like dampening stuff, you can, matter? No, well, <laughs> yeah, but that would be uh, blatant. That would be uh, sort of reason. It's not vulgar. It's uh, catastrophic because uh, you'd have to like physically raise a shield of metal around you or something. You could do it with forces. An invisible, forces. skin tight layer of energy that reflects the sound waves. Someone convinced me to take forces off. That was me. <laughs> um... two, di two dice to two dots to do yourself, three dots to do others. No. Okay. It's still weaker on you, though because you killed the sound, it's still weaker. Okay. Then... Do I know if... Uh, huh. Also, you don't feel the urge to dance. You think it's their connection to Tam that pulled them in so easily. What'd you get on your roll, by the way, Leo? Oh, you said I had to roll what? Balance. Difficulty balance? seven. Okay, so five. Three, come on, there we go. I thought you said... Uh, difficulty, what was it? Seven. Seven. Hold on. Zero. Yep, you're dancing your way to Tam, too. Yep. And, and, and Drake, you're like, hmm, yeah, there we go. I can't hear. I can't hear the sick beat. Shit! <laughs> and then, uh, you look up, and you see the three of them grinding like that scene from, uh, Basic Instinct on the dance floor. And you're like, Shit. And that's where we <laughs> take our mid-show break. No, no. <laughs> Don't go anywhere, audience. We'll be back in a few minutes to see the fate of the Endless Dancers of Changeling. We know nothing bad happens when you dance with Changelings and fairies. It'll be fine. Yeah.
And we have returned. We've only lost two members of the party. All is well. It's free rebate. I mean, okay. Tovi and Leo are grinding on Tam in the middle of the dance floor. Going from thirsty to thirsty. <laughs> Nailed it. Damn it. We dancing away, even though nice. I hate the music. Should I like just pause time or something? I don't know. I mean, this beat's kind of good. Uh, Gabriel's mouth is moving. You have no idea what, what they're saying. I'm going to use correspondence can... to fix that. No, that's to Blake, because Blake deadened his ears. I thought... 
I, I, I specifically was trying to make it so only the music couldn't be heard. I, 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 can I oh, that? that would require forces. You, you'd have to deaden all or none of your ears of life. Oh, right. Okay, so my to, question... To ex exclude specific frequencies of sound would be forces. Oh, okay. Then that was my question specifically, was the frequency part, so... Yeah, that would require forces. Oh, okay. Then either I don't do that, or once I realize the vibrations still come through, I'll, I'll just You drop it. it. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. <clears throat> okay. So, we need to go get them. And we ought to figure out where we're going because we're just walking into trap after trap at this point. Okay. So, all right. <clears throat> Roll perception plus awareness, Gabriel. Excellent. Uh, difficulty six? Yep. Six is default unless I say otherwise. Correct. For everybody. I just like to make sure. Um computer is being slow so there we go okay and roll the dice aha four successes time has already stopped time is not progressing <laughs> anywhere in this building so far as you've been. <laughs> okay Drake continue your thought because that epiphany <laughs> kicks into Gabriel in the middle of your sentence you, you see Gabriel just, like, jamming a little bit. You know, not too much, not getting carried away. And then all of a sudden he stops and you just... Fuck! You okay? Um... Can, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So... I look to the, I look to the father. <laughs> In here is stopped. <laughs> this really is the purgatory. We so... should go get them. Yes. Do I hear anything that they're saying? Yeah. All right, they're not, father. They're not being silent about it. All right, father. Time to go, John Lithgow. This. <sighs> I believe you mean Lithgow. With Gal. Let's go. No. Just pull them away from Tam. I'll try to take care of the rest. Alright, I'll uh I'll get Leo. He's beefier and uh <laughs> You get Sophie? What the do you what what do you take me for? I can handle Leo. So you want Leo? No, I'd rather have Sophie. <laughs> I, I go I, I kind of lean back into Gabriel you gotta trust me on this one bro alright I'm helping you out save her life wait oh Stability I see rolls, all three you of you. there <laughs> difficulty seven uh, stability uh, which three as soon ones? as you enter the dance floor three. Yeah. you mean balance balance sorry yeah oh balance I'm not Oh no, I'm not going onto the dance floor. I'm standing okay. at the edge of it and I'm gonna try to see if I can focus forces around Tam and just cause like a burst to push them away if all else fails. So your forces break on around the energy of the dance floor and are dispersed and you realize maybe you could, but you'd have to put a lot of effort into it. It would not be fast. I and you'd probably need help. Do not see balance on my sheet. It was when we were. You should have recorded that in. separately at creation. Yeah. Oh, uh, so <laughs> I put I'll mine just... in the other traits section. Me too. Same. What sort same. of help? Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. More mages. So I'm gonna need to select something that has the equivalent dots. Mm -hmm. More Is mages. It... You know, Tyler, apologies for this or, or a long ritual, Father. Go ahead, Drake. Was it balance plus an attribute? Nope. It's just balance. Just balance. Okay. What about if I use a dark side point? A what? <laughs> Two successes. You okay. know, the... you start grooving. Hmm. Gabriel fades off into crowd dancing. 
Okay. I'll, uh, I'll uh, invite Gabriel to join our little dance circle. Yep. The crowd parts around Drake with his no successes as Drake does the most baller break dance you've ever seen. Like, that man's <laughs> okay. got fucking skills. Drake like, okay, you, time how to do put you this... bend that way? <laughs> time to crash this party right now. <laughs> so, by dark side point, do you mean... Okay, you can go ahead and take over for a minute to your avatar, is that what you're saying? Oh no! Oh god. <laughs> okay, what's the exact wording you're going to say to yourself? To your inner self? <laughs> they're not... They're not up for sale. This isn't a deal we're making. I offer, I'm offering you pain, and in return, I want them to be free of this place. Your friends. I, I can save your friends. And yes, I will accept an offering of pain. I will not hurt physically your friends. And I will not directly, mentally hurt your friends. But I have to break the spell that's on them. You understand. Yes, I understand. We have an agreement then? He doesn't say anything. He just he knows what he knows what the what the what it is. And he yes. kinda like focuses at his his um everything that all his energy that he has to just basically create a um like kill the sound burst uh with tam being the the point of the the center of the burst and everybody gets thrown off the fucking dance floor like this party's so, over <laughs> that's what you think's gonna happen right you put your hands out to channel sure. <laughs> yes you put your hands out to channel forces and you hear the voice say excellent and then you blink and uh, you're sitting in a chair up against the wall, and there's a commotion in the middle of the dance floor. Most people, like everyone except your friends, are still dancing. Your friends are freaking out. They're like, oh my god, scream, yell, what the fuck's going on? And they're all like crowded around something. It's Tam, whose throat's been cut ear to ear. You look down, you're holding a knife. None of them are, none of your friends are dancing anymore. Uh, I what the fuck? I immediately uh, grab onto uh, life. None of the four uh, of you saw what happened except a dancer came out of the dance floor, just a shadow and a blur, and then blood. None of uh, you know it was the father. I have two dots in life. I'm going to try to use that to save Tam. Two dots will not work on other people, only yourself. Oh, shit. What if I helped her? I got two dots in life as well. Mm. Nope. Nope. Oh, damn. Well, can uh, I reverse the time? He calls out to them if he can. He's just like, he's like, we have to get out of out of here. Come on, let's go. What do you do with the stiletto that you didn't even know you had? <laughs> I'm just like, uh, how did this happen? Uh, he's gonna kind of drop that shit and be like, I don't know what happened. Oh my god! Surprise right. knife! Like, Jesus, uh, father, did you see that? What the fuck happened? I, like, did you I, see? That I, guy I, came out of nowhere. I don't know. We, just we need to move. Straight up first aid. Like, try to stop the bleeding at least. Yeah. It, it's too late, my child. We have to keep moving. Can I reverse time on Tim's body? Time's not flowing. Yeah. There's nothing to reverse. No. These, yeah, like like I told Sophie, when they these are real people in here, yeah. You feel like this is the main club that people think they're going to. No, because the life force is being siphoned into whatever's to the southwest in that room in the other chamber mm -hmm. something with a more powerful mastery of life energy is pulling away the essence of the life like a sacrifice
Well, Kofi, let's go and kick this guy's ass. He killed us. Listen, right. listen to what he said. Let's go. Uh, I will pick up Cam's body and bring it with us if I can. And we will force him to heal Tam. Father, roll clarity. Difficulty seven. Clarity. All right, four. Uh, okay. Seven. One, two, three successes. Nice. You lose no clarity, but you do lose one point of stability. You just okay. committed a murder. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not going to be happy about this later. Um, where is this? Uh, I lose one stability? Yep. Okay, so I'm at nine now. Okay. Like... <sighs> so you all head to the southwest then is what's happening. Yeah. yeah, I we run to the door. And I will try to kick open the door. Like. There are no doors in the hallways. The doors in this room are leading to other places to be besides hallways. Okay, I'll go. You uh, run down the southwest hallway and skid to a stop as the hallway brightens and brightens and brightens and widens out into a vast wasteland of rust and crags and sand dunes and molten lava and fire and towering buildings that have impossible geometrical shapes going straight up into the air. And into the horizon. This is what you saw in your nightmare, Leo. You stop. You just like freeze up like shell shock. After a brief moment of freeze up, you're in control of yourself again. But this is what you saw in your vision at the beginning. Guys, this, this is, is Inferno. Past that barrier, you enter Inferno. Guys, past this past this doorway or barrier is hell. Is basically hell. This is what I saw when I was <laughs> Messing with the spirits earlier. This is what I saw. So we're going to see some fucked up shit. 100%. So I need you guys to be fair, Leo. Leo, I've been preparing for this walk for a very long time. I'm just saying. We need to be prepared. Read me your lures, all of you, starting with Father. My lures. Uh, Nefandi lore, one. High ritual, two. Theology, one, two. Belief systems, two. Are there others? Drake. Nope, that's good. Yeah, same. Everybody should have at least a dot in lore. It might not be on your first knowledge page. It might be farther down on the second page. What is the lore? Yeah. Yeah, everybody's got I, lore I, in a specific thing. Oh. Uh, hmm. let's, see if I st- let's see what we gave you. Hold on. I believe my lore was. Uh, oh, wait. Uh, Jared has Underworld 1. Yeah. Werewolf and Stephen Vampire. Rachel nice. both have, Underworld. Steve and Rachel both have Clippeth 1. Clippothicness. And Eric and Ever should have Demonology 1. So, I have Nefandi. Uh, 122, 2021. And when I search, it searches all of Discord. Jump! Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a side message to you that I'm looking at. I probably just copy pasted. Uh, you might have recorded it as Esoterica, not Lord. Yeah, and yours is specifically Clippeth. Q-L-I-P-P-O-T-H. Got three dots. That's the character. So those of you with Demonology, which is Father Vega and Gabriel, please roll that plus Intelligence. So Intelligence plus one. The difficulty six? Yep. Here we do. Oh, Gabriel's, Gabriel's distracted by the horror. Zero successes. I would get five dice. So one second. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> oh. I got.
got one success, and one success. Uh, but I also rolled a one. <laughs> oh no! What's the oh, success? What did, what, what did you roll on the success die? A six. Okay. Uh, Wouldn't it be a zero? You both right. know the same thing, but you don't know the solution. It's a one-way trip. This doorway only works in. You'd have to find another way out, but neither of you can recall what those methods are. You both failed. <laughs> so if you pass through that barrier, you're not coming back through this hallway. You'd have to find another gateway back to the real world. For real. Oh. And would they tell us this, or...? I just hope so. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, if we keep going, there's no, there's no going back. We have to. There has to be another way back that we must find. God, I don't know about this, guys. Taking a personal trip to hell and not be able to come back. Fuck. We can get trapped out here forever for a very long time, especially. Is... With the... <laughs> I think that goes for any one of the directions that we chose. This one more so than the others, perhaps. A giggling couple runs past you. Like, you know, they're high on something and they're trying to find somewhere to make out. Yeah. And, uh... I try to stop They're groping that. each other as they run past you, and then, uh... Uh, she pushes him up against the corner, and while they're making out... Uh... She pulls out a knife hacks off his pinky finger he just laughs and she picks it up and starts chewing on it while he's necking her what the fuck Madre de Dios. Oh, all right so i'm just gonna go ahead and say it. we're already in a fucked up situation we don't know how to get out of just go we'll figure it out she's fine right? whatever take control we're losing control of the situation we're gonna take it back we're gonna take it back we're gonna make the choice walk through <laughs> that door let's go uh, if the life was you being can, drained, I'm sorry, go ahead. You can roll straight up wits to determine your reaction to what Blake just said. Drake just said. Why do I want to call you Blake? To what Drake just said. So everyone but Drake can roll just intelligence if difficulty six. Uh, intelligence or wits? Wits, sorry. Difficulty what? Six. Oh, cool. I got two successes and a one. <laughs> the club is not as yeah. bad as hell. Yeah. Anyone who gets at least one success, the club is not worse than hell. Anyone who doesn't, oh yeah, what could be worse? Three I, successes I think, for me. I got two successes. I think as the martyr, Vega is obligated to march into to hell. If there's any, <laughs> chance, if there's any chance of saving Tam, since you know. He's the one who caused this mess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I feel like, despite whatever logical warnings are going off in his head, like, go back to the fucking club, you moron. It's more like, no, I I did this. I deserve to be punished. I'm going it forward. What about you three? And by the way, uh, the vote doesn't mean it carries. It's telling me what you're doing. Drake and the father can still go in without the rest of you if they want. But I still need to know what you three are going to do. I don't know about this, guys. This is... So, does does the Padre, like, voice this uh, attitude at all? Not really. Uh, the way that he would express this publicly uh, to the rest of you, because he's ashamed of it, of what he just did, is he would say, Drake said that Tam has life force is being drained from something inside Inferno. Perhaps this is exactly what happened to Genevieve. Something fed on her soul, on her life force, here. Father, Padre. I can't let you go without me because obviously you're gonna need me and Gabriel is just like attached to your hip. So good luck trying to get him to stay. I don't know. You don't have to come with me. <laughs> do you think he? Do you really think he's not gonna come with you? Like, this is a very bad idea. Tam's life was not your responsibility. I was. I don't know what happened back there, but I was the one holding the knife. 
Why would you say that? You were nowhere near him. I don't remember what happened. Very... F uh, I don't know. Sophie. Yes. You're watching all this unfold, fold, going, <laughs> drama. When, uh, you feel something sharp in the lower corner of your left side of your back. And a soft hand curl around your waist. Someone's hugging you from behind and whispers in your ear, Don't go. I want to play. And something is shoved in your back pocket and then the, the pressure is released. You whip around, oh. just a shadow disappearing towards the last part of the club you haven't gone into. <laughs> a shadow of fishnets and Doc Martens. Oh, shit. Oh, yay. You check what's in your pocket? Yes. A very bloody locket of hair. Your life <laughs> magic tells you that's your cousin's. Mm -hmm. Shit. Like, torn out from the root locket. Uh... So... Betna Fandy just put this in my pocket. What? We got a Defendi behind us, and Hell in front of us. Oh wow, we are really... Now we are in a pick. You can tell them pick. what the hair is? This is Genevieve's. How can you be sure? Because I'm a mage? Because <laughs> it resonates life, with her, her life essence is all over it. That I knew because we were best friends since we were four? That sort of thing can't be faked, can it, Tyler? Not in any way you're aware of. Yeah, come on. Come on, Padre. We, we... But, like, you know, magic. Magic, who knows. Alright, so. First thought that comes to your mind. Quick. Hell Tam. Nefandi. Nefandi said that she wants to play. Games well, worse. Sophie, if you do decide to go, I'm not going to let you go alone. No it's thinking it through. Stupid. Guys, no thinking it through. That's how you get caught up in stuff. All right? You take the situation. Beat a snake. Make a choice. Punch yourself through it. There's a wall. Kick it out. Punch Which way are we go? Left it. or right? <laughs> Let's go. I know that's not what you said, but that's my head cannon now. Punch yourself through it. <laughs> An inspirational poster from Blit Drake. <laughs> Punch know. yourself through it. We just uh, need in the right. shop eventually. And this is out of character. A an entire section of Drake mm -hmm. quotes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> On sunsets. <laughs> you know what? Hell, hell has rules. She doesn't. Good point. And we can save Tam, so that way we can. Uh, do I like the it. Thing later. With those two and me, that's three. And I just sidekick the door to hell open. <laughs> There's no door. It's just a hallway that opens into hell. I sidekick the right. air that leads us <laughs> to hell open. And he just walks and he's like, let's do this. I'm sorry. I'm just picturing Jean-Claude Van Damme spin kicking his way in. That's right. <laughs> just, just taking off Lucifer? like a helicopter. Just spin kick oh. helicopter all the way in. <clears throat> okay. Hmm. Okay. You cross the threshold into the inferno. A hallway disappears like it was never there, and you're in the middle of a wasteland of rust and pain. It's very hot. And the wind is blowing, and the sand scours your skin away. You all immediately take a lethal point of damage. Oh, fuck. That shit hurts. That's the middle one, right? I can't remember which one. Ah, uh, yes. Bashing left, lethal, middle, aggravated, right, crypt. Okay. Well, where are we finding this? Her health. health. You start a bruise, I believe, and you work for you down? Yep. Okay, yep. gotcha. Alright, so we got one dot and bruise. Is that usually what we do? Middle dot and bruise, yes. Okay. Alright, three, so points, of, three points of life magic. I want to see that life trail that was being sucked mm -hmm. into here. Um, that's what we're following, so. Three. That's actually spirit. That's me. I'll, I'll, I'll uh -huh. that. Once it passed the barrier, it became... Uh, undead isn't the word. I don't know what the word is. purgatory <laughs> Eid. <laughs> okay. It got uh, it got franked. How about that? that make, that'll make sense to me and Steve, at least. It's been franked. It crossed the threshold. Okay. okay. Yeah, I will... And if you bring it back, it's going to be that best. I will... <laughs> 
I'll take his advice and I will use my spirit to find it. Roll it. Follow it. Perception plus awareness. Difficulty eight. Oh my god. You want to spend I need willpower the on that one. Sand. Freaking awareness, man. Yeah. Do you want to spend a willpower? Yeah. Yes. Do it. Please. I'm going to spend two. Yes. Okay. Awareness. Think... As mentioned during creation, awareness is perception for wizards. Yeah. I think I need to spend some uh, XP in, when we're able to do that in awareness. All right. So what was it? Perception and awareness. Difficulty eight. Difficulty eight. And then uh, willpowers are automatic successes, correct? One, yes. You can only spend one. Oh, I can only spend one? Okay. But yes, I will spend a willpower. Roll die. And I got... Oh, Jesus. You got a botch. Okay. Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> it's not going to be good, guys. I'm sorry. Uh... <laughs> oh, God. Negative one. So, you get the willpower success, and you can see the trail the spirit took. But uh, you don't see how it got there. Because between you and it is a mountain range and then a skyline of a massive city. Jesus. Twisted or broken skyscrapers. I also have spirit at one. Uh, do I just roll awareness? One's not enough for this. Ah, shit. Spirit at one tells you there are billions Spirits. of dead souls here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. Well, maybe a million. I don't know. At least a billion. Not he, everyone goes to Inferno. He points out the trail and he's like, that's where we need to go. But uh, there's. He a points. He, he just kind of points off towards a small mountain range and a city off in the distance. A city of the damned. What could go wrong? <laughs> A lot. Man. Well, okay. How do we? Huh, Jesus, guys, we don't have enough time to fucking climb a damn mountain. Damn, damn, gonna die. We don't do something quick. A voice from behind you oh. says. A voice from behind you, impossibly deep, says, "Time." <laughs> <laughs> There's no time here. Here, your suffering is endless. You all whip around, and you see some kind of nightmare from one of those cheesy 80s movies by Clive Barker. <laughs> Just kind of gliding across the ground towards you, flanked by two others, like all leather and metal interwoven through flesh, and scarification, belts of knives, and tools for torture. Hold on. Peeled um... apart and restructured into some new form. Uh, it's not often we receive willing guests. Fuck, fuck it. Um, they be behind me. Um, let's do this. The one who's talking and being all badass-like, um, I get a running start, and I'm going to do a jump with about four rotations, and I'm going to kick this son of a bitch in the face. <laughs> Why are you doing this? I'm going to let you have your kick before the, into the uh, interception happens. Do it! Let's do your first real attack. I was gonna say, this is the first attack I've ever actually Surprise attack to on do. not pinhead. <laughs> um, so I am actually doing the way that I described that. I am actually doing typhoon kick. It is a tell the audience about typhoon kick. I am badass. <laughs> re-looking up all the rules to typhoon kick because <laughs> it's kind of a thing. <laughs> <laughs> this is why merging mage with cult is awesome. It's typhoon kick pinhead. Uh, the PDF is looking really hard. Ah, uh, shoot. Actually, it might be easier to just use your pens here. Uh, yeah, I see it. Oh, yeah. Mine's chugging, too. The PDF's like... Really has a you look up. Yeah, hold on. There's the <laughs> where's the dough? It's on page four twenty nine, I believe, or four thirty. Yeah, sorry, four yeah. Thank you. I put typhoon kick at the in top. an Adobe return typically. 
Thanks, Adobe. Yep, yep, yep. Same here. Uh, Thank you, Paperclip. Where are you? Okay, all right. <clears throat> Typhoon Kick. Perhaps the most devastating strike in the Akashic Technique. Um, in the Akashic Technique arsenal, the Typhoon Kick directs chi, momentum, and supreme focus into a blow that can shatter stone and kill most beings. Like the martial arts uh, maneuver Thunder Kick, this attack requires absolute concentration and may be done no more than once every five turns. The practitioner can choose to use either bashing or lethal damage for this kick if she directs it against a solid object, a car, wall, stone, elemental, etc., or a character who manages to soak all the damage, and she must also make a successful soak roll or take half the damage rounded down herself. A successful soak roll means no damage. So I have to roll my dex plus doe. Dex. Or me faso. My doe is four, which is going to be, let's see. Martial arts plus that. Uh, the difficulty is eight to hit with Typhoon Kick. I am definitely spending a point of willpower. Um, all right, so I'm rolling Dex plus Doe. Um, difficulty eight with one willpower spent. And here is my roll. I Look at that. Three successes on the roll plus my willpower makes that four successes. Roll damage. All right, so my damage is strength plus five plus successes. Okay. Uh, my strength, uh, I roll the strength to get that total, right? It's not just what my yes. actual number is? Okay. Correct. All right, so I actually have to click strength plus an extra thing because my strength is six, which means I have more dots than the sheet allows. Um, can I spend willpower on damage? No. And You can't spend willpower on damage or things you don't know are happening. Okay, and successes on damage are back to six, right? Correct. Okay. That is six, okay. Jerry, two, you've leaned back so far, you've disappeared. Two successes. Um, <laughs> so five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So my damage is eleven. I am making it lethal. Um, also, if I'm dealing... Just remember, also, if I deal any damage at all, my dual abilities allow me to put yet another point of lethal damage on top of it. So if whatever he takes from my eleven damage... He'll take an extra, um, not damage, but an actual, like, point of, you know, br uh, bruised, hurt, injured, wounded, whatever. You typhoon kick the aberrant horror of pain. Uh, you hear the satisfying cracking of multiple bones. Blood flies. Faces pulped. The noise it makes, though, sounds like second not screams of agony it hits the ground slides back like 10 feet it's a little dent in the ground the one next to it says impressive now it's our turn chains come from nowhere with barbed hooks on the end at all of you like a like a hemisphere it's like 50 of them jesus drake what the fuck it's not drake really? you're in hell you're in their world um, you had to do that we're about to die now. Thanks a lot. Right before the chains hit and embed themselves in your tender, tender flesh, everything freezes except you. And you hear a, a chuckle behind you. Well done, folks. Well done. Southern brawl. Southern drawl, not brawl. <laughs> Looks like you could use a little bit of help, though, don't you think? To male voice from behind. Oh, well over my shoulder Who's I guess I, who are you I, I think I know who this is I will turn around I take yeah. this off you said the hooks stop before they hit me everything stops but you yes can I still I think I know who it is too can I still control I myself 
Yes. Oh, Jesus. I take this the world is frozen except for you. I take this opportunity, uh, seeing the hooks and stuff, like, in the, in the extra second I have, I want to take that chance to use my life, and I actually am going to harden my body um, enough where hooks and spikes and swords shouldn't be able to pierce my skin. If you refuse to take the deal, we'll deal with that, because you'll actually have to roll for that. Okay, no problem. Not, these are not earthly hooks. Sure, but I'm, you know, reacting to what I'm seeing, so... Right. All right, turn around. Let's see what... It is a <laughs> balding southern gentleman. Hmm. Like, he's got a properly trimmed beard. He's balding. He's a little portly. He's not imposing much at all. <laughs> he's wearing a nice suit. It's, like, not disheveled. It's Everything's been crisply ironed. It's a tan color. He's got nice shoes, but they're not overly nice. They're not pretentious. He's got uh, he's got a hat. He's holding his hat in his hands. It's a fedora, like an old timey one. Looks like you folks could use some help. And that's what I'm here for to help folks. I look at the crushed skull of the the other thing ten feet back and playing it off like I'm super badass. I don't know, bro. It seems like we got it pretty under control. He uh, points over your other shoulder towards the west. I'm sorry. So, like, the, the, the purgatides are north, he's south, he points west. There are more of them approaching over a hill in the horizon, maybe half a dozen. Drake, I don't think we have this under control. They're frozen, though. Sure, sure, you can sure. see them. Uh, I mean, six of them, six of us, like, we're pretty cool. We're pretty badass. Mm, yeah, but oh, no. also in Eight of them, six of you. Eight of them, six of us. We're pretty badass. We got a, we got a priest. We got a, we got Any a, of you who don't want to die, I'm here to help you out. Okay. Go by the way, name. you don't just die once in hell. You die over and over again. Oh, I, I know. I Sorry, for a name say, like, uh, should we ask? Mr. Pinkerton, pleased to meet you, Lita. Uh, pleased to meet your father. And shakes your hand vigorously. I'm going to turn around and I'm like, like, hi, how are you? I am very well, Leo. How are you? Good. Other than the fact that you voluntarily walked into hell and apparently attracted every purgatide within ten miles somehow. Good trick. Well, first of all, I didn't, technically didn't volunteer. Yeah, you did. You walked right through the hallway. I watched you. They were corpses. More Me. incorporated, considering. No, our you, you did it of your own free will. You can't talk your way out of hell, son. Uh, no, he he has a point. We we all willingly walked through. Okay. Okay, okay. And I'm here to help. I can get you out of here. Okay. And I just need you to do a little something for me when you get back. Ooh, deal with the devil. I don't know how. I'm not the devil. I mean, those, yeah. they, those, them, those, they were the devil. Trust okay. me, he doesn't look like I do. In any form. It's not a he either, it's an it. It. Okay. Well, uh, what are you offering? I'll take you back to the club. Well, okay, what are... <laughs> no what do you want us to do? No offense. No, no offense, Leo. I appreciate it. But, uh... You just angered pretty much the whole half of hell. Right now, you're, like... Your words do not matter at this moment. What we need to do is maybe take up on his role so that way we can survive this damn mess. Leo, can you tell me a goddamn thing about hell or the rules of it or demons? I can. What do you want to know? I'm not talking to you either right now. <laughs> well, then I'm going to talk to your friend Leo. Always been curious. All I need you to do for me is when you get back... Don't just stop this murderer that's killing these innocent people. Find out who they're working for. That's what I need you to do. That's what we were here to do in the first place. Yeah, that's like our... It's main. actually not. Your job was to find the killer. And he just told you the killer's working for someone. Right. That's brand new information to you. Hmm. Ah, so there's someone behind You them. thought it was just an evil serial killer mage type. Apparently that's the bottom of the chain. So Find out who they are and deal with them. That's all I want. I look to so No souls. No blood packs. Just your word. 
I looked at Sophie specifically, like very questioningly, just like, and kind of like trying to eye the idea, like this is your circle of stuff, not mine. Maybe the priest would know too. I mean, um, I always figured I'd end up here eventually. <laughs> Damn it. Can you give me a date with your boss? Are you talking to Mr. Pinkerton? Yes. My boss? I mean, we have a common enemy. Well, my boss isn't a person, darling. Hmm. He does not say darling condescendingly. He says it <laughs> southernly. Well, then. All right. <laughs> Most of you know what I'm talking about. I'm willing to make this deal, but you need to sweeten the pot. So you want me to do something besides save you from them? And those. He's pointing at the hooks. And then I want you to, points at the lava. I want you to save. I want you to save him too. Points at dying Tam. Points back towards where the hallway was. Okay. Um. Oh. Can you do this? You, you mean you mean your you, you mean the you mean your lover changed like? Okay. We never technically went on a date. No. But whatever happened to him, he didn't deserve. Agreed. Sure. He's the most innocent out of Why all not? of us. Okay. I like your term, Sophie. I can agree to that. I then look with, from so with oh. soul with soul intact. He chuckles good naturedly. I'm not a devil. Okay. I might be a salesman, but I'm no old scratch. I, I mean, don't I, I don't I don't I don't deal in souls. I I'm just saying like we're we're encountering a really polite, suited man in hell. Certain assumptions will be made. Agreed. That isn't a man. Uh, yeah, I looked. I look from no. Sophie, who's kind of you know given me the indication that this is a deal we should take, and then I look over to uh, Vega. Uh... Nobody's used awareness on him yet. So actually, you um, you can say that Vega, but you don't know until you open your senses. I'll open my senses, Any of you but I'll could keep do. it to myself. Uh, I actually don't have a proper awareness. That I have, is t fake. I have two the dots prime of fit? Uh, Yeah, roll awareness plus perception, anyone who wants to. Or just perception. You don't uh, need the awareness when you use sphere magic. It just gives you more chances of success. I will make a raw perception roll. All right, Drake, that's a critical success. Same, I'll do a raw perception roll as well. And Father Vega gets a crit fail. <laughs> we can do. Did you say we can do perception on a roll? Awareness? Correct. Sweet. Leo straight fails. I believe I got two successes. Sophie got two successes. So five for Drake, two for Sophie. The computer's working on it. You're overwhelmed by the horrible signatures of the, the monsters that this guy referred to as purgatides, Father Vega. Ah, uh, one success. Dang it. Those of you who made less than five successes, it's definitely a man. Like, it's a man. Man. It's uh, a man, man. Yeah, it's like a human man. Human spirit. And for you with the critical success there, uh, Drake. Drake. Not Blake. Uh, it's just, it's subtle, but he's a mage. Oh. Not, not subtle like he's hiding it. It's like his aura is very... It's a static aura. It's a pattern aura, and it's very subtle. It's calm. It's in control. I got his, a uh, his resonance is very. I am calm, quiet, subtle, and in control of my environment. Then, in that case, well, that's interesting. In control of my environment. So, okay, okay. So, when he says I don't deal in souls, I'll just kind of be like, uh, so, question, um, what do you deal in specifically? Like, not souls. So what? I do whatever it is my boss sends me to do. My boss said to stop you from getting whatever those are going to do to you. To... Sure. Who's your boss? Like, that's probably a stupid question, but I feel like it just needs to be asked. Uh, Abhaloth Sebek. Does that name mean anything to me? Nope. Okay. Everyone looks at the priest. 
<laughs> nope. You are obviously way more powerful than us. I put it in Discord. What is stopping you from, well, you not doing this yourself? You can obviously, you probably could find him faster and kill him faster if you don't mind me asking. It's not my job. I think well, hurry up and decide. I don't, I don't like it here. I'm getting a little sweaty. Make up your minds. We'll take I'll your take deal for your master. master. Whatever. We'll take it. Just make sure you save Tam too. What about you two sweet things? Looks at Drake and Gabriel. Sick flip kick, by the way, bro. <laughs> Appreciate you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> There's got to be a catch. There's always yeah. A catch the catch is I need you to do what I what, what you what you're gonna give your word you did. Catch Hurry up, there ain't no time. I'm catch gonna is gonna be that whoever it is we have to kill outside of here is gonna make our lives a whole lot fucking worse. But unfortunately, at this point in time, we kind of got to, man. So, all right, we'll take the fall, right? We're gonna be all right. We're gonna take it. We're gonna, you know what? It's just, it's just the turning of everything, all right? It's just the universe. Let's go. Get me the fuck out of here. <laughs> Everybody, each one of y'all, this guy right here, saving y'all. He's saving each and one, every one of y'all. <laughs> From this, oh from this right here. That's right. Guys, I think we should. Gabriel, <laughs> Mr. Pinkerton is not my personal savior, but I am grateful, and I will. Uh, I ain't Jesus do my neither. Best to uphold the deal. Yeah, same. Can you please get me out of here, please? I'm Save. Tim. What's that, Gabriel? It says Pinkerton. Fine. Excellent. I have your word then. Pleasure doing business with y'all. I'm sure we'll be talking soon. No. And then, in a blink, you're back in the club. With a very confused Tam going, Why aren't we dancing? Why are we in a hallway? What the hell is that? Because you can see hell again, Inferno. <laughs> uh, long story. I'll tell very you over long. dinner. Why is my throat? I'll be joining. Same. It's like you got a little an exterior sore throat. That's weird. We should leave. I think. Oh. Guys, don't we got the issue of the um no, the what's the name? I'm sorry. Nef Nefandi. Nef Mr. Pinkerton's Master. Then we got the issue with Nefandi in the other room, or... Padre, do you know who his master is? No. You've never heard Abeloth Sebek before. Doesn't mean there isn't lore on it, you've just never heard it. I guess that's something we could look up later. Lord of Hell, one other of many, perhaps. But if we're if they're willing to make concessions to let us go because we're they know that we're on the trail of this killer who works for something much more dangerous than it. Can we? Perhaps let's... its master is much more of a threat to Mr. Pinkerton's own master. Can we, without invoking anything that might be potentially traumatizing to people here, acknowledge that was crazy powerful? What the fuck? Yeah. Did you share with them, Drake, that it was a Magus at this stage? Um, once we're out of it, um, although he said that he could see us walk through, so he's watching this club. That's interesting. Um, yeah, well, yeah, it's, it's, do, to catch, oh, by the way. Thank you. Uh, so, um, I'll let them know, just like, hey guys, I got a little bit of information about what we just went through there. I noticed something, I'm not sure everyone else did, but I want to get out of here first, because that guy's watching us, in case y'all didn't pick that up. Yeah. And you do tell him he's a mage? Not yet. Okay. I'm not going to tell them that. I, I, I'm saying I know something, but I don't want to say it until we're out of here, because he's watching us. If he's watching us, then what would stop him from knowing what you need to tell us once we're out of here? Cause I don't know, it might be close to the fact that we're standing next to the gate to hell, and he has control over it because he got us out of it, so if we can get away from the gate to hell, no dancing, footloose, then we might, uh, Extra dance. <laughs> then we might be more protected, you know, Wait. back in our chantry. Well, 
do we not want to take care of the the nephilim that oh no i'm about to go sidekick her through a wall nefandi uh, not nephilim i would just uh, like to yeah nefandi yeah. set the record straight we, for we no particular need to, reason we need to deal with her but mm. somewhere else that is not her turn this is her turn i will also point out the root of Nefandi and Mage is not Nephilim. It's actually two different old words that basically means Eater of the Week. Mm. Huh. So it's not related even in Mage lexicon, just so you know, <laughs> to are Nephilim. You, are you proposing we lure out a Nefandi from this place, Sophie? I'm saying right. that when we kill her, we should do it uh, in an environment that we control, and she does not. Like our tree tree of some sort, but... <laughs> Uh, I don't want to bring her to our chantry either. Like, I mean, I like, let's lure no, like a, a warehouse and I drop an anvil on her. <laughs> what? Like an abandoned warehouse of some sort that we can destroy with nobody around? Yes. Well, well she just said it's a good idea. Later, but yeah. Sophie, we will get this killer. We I mean, will we have to. Well, yeah. Yeah, but... we just made a deal with like a demon lord. I don't. I don't like... That weird. <laughs> Creepy guy aside, I'm I'm uh, talking about for is, Genevieve. Is is Tam still here? Yeah. Okay. I'm very confused. <laughs> yeah, I I turned to him I'm like, okay, I'm sorry. This is probably very confusing to you. Uh, you know that we're mages, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Turned that out in the car. Right. Uh. Is that what you call yourselves? Cool. Yeah. So you know, like the the redheaded lady with the boots and the eyes. Uh, no, who you what? Bouncer lady. Bouncer. The yeah, only bouncer, bouncer out there was that really tall uh, trans person. Really cool. Real cool person. Fuck. We talked for a minute. Chuck Taylor's fishnet. Uh, small, but you know, feisty. Blank yeah. stare. If you ever see anyone matching that description, like, do not talk to her at all. Yes. But she sounds hot. Yeah, well, do you want to die? You know what? I, I, want to I die. will dress up for you in as much fishnets and green contacts and docks as you want, but you can't talk to her. Deal. Okay. There you go. And I want, and I want in on that action. Okay? Oh yeah, you're wearing <laughs> the fishnets too. Yep, same here. <laughs> I don't ever stance. <laughs> <laughs> right, but, uh, we have to go. We've got to leave this place like, right now. Uh, you can come with us if you like, but we got only go. if we're going back to your place. Uh, uh, can we put a pin in that? Yes. Put something in that. Okay. <laughs> Bruh. Just for my own Bruh, pedestrian you gotta, understanding. Bruh, you gotta bring of it this. back like two notches for us, all right, man? <laughs> yeah. Um. Did the main did Pinkerton reverse time, or did he just bring Tam back to life? No time was reversed. Tam was like, why does my throat hurt? That's weird. A second ago, I was dancing. Now I'm in a hallway and my throat hurts. Definitely not reverse time. It was a resurrection. Oh, Yeah, wow. it was like life, okay. life five. Yeah. And time five. And correspondence five. Yeah, if which it is means a mage, which you don't know yet, because Drake hasn't told you, it would mean yeah. it's an arc magus. Jesus. All right. Okay. So how Let's do go. we want Let's to, do get we out want of to here. make our presence known to this Nefandi at this point? Especially if we're trying to... She knows. Well, she knows we're here. She probably knows we're awakened. Because she gave me this! Holds up Cousin's hair again. She's toying with us. Right. Yes. Yes. Fuck. So we have to play her game now. Well, we have to play her game to at least lure her out. Exactly. Is a Some being sort of, of pure evil it has to be destroyed. Yes, yes, she is evil, but we do not know how powerful she is. And this, like, she owns this place. This is her playground. So let's leave. Um, Time to start a fight. I was just gonna say, like, at this point, I look, I like, I look around. Um, Can we just start causing masses chaos in this place? So you're just in another hallway right now. The only people in the hallway besides you and Tam is the making out couple who are literally eating each other now. Sure. While moaning. That's Can fine. I just, like, 
just push the Oh out. yeah, like, can file that away and never again and get the fuck out of here. <laughs> if you try, they're gonna attack you, Leo. Oh yeah, no, I'm not. I was joking. That's not happening. But yeah. Okay, like, so I walk out of this. There's one place you haven't gone yet. In the club. The one last. One room bar hellhole you haven't room. gone to. <laughs> All right, so let's right. go check out this last place and see what we can do, because we've got a, you know. Yeah, we're on her turf. Shore's got the advantage. We got to take it back. We got to do something she's not expecting. Basically, do something crazy. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> I think that we have that well in hand. So you head down the last hallway, and it actually opens up into a well-lit lit gallery. Like, it's laid out like an art gallery. And there are people in here looking around, looking at the art. And like, hmm, yes, that's fascinating, you know, pretentious art people. Very quietly. Some nice music playing. Uh, how many of you have seen the TV version of Hannibal? Anybody? TV Not had the pleasure. Which? Hannibal. With Mads Mikkelsen? Yeah. So... One of the things he does to one of his victims in that show is a glass panel display vivisection. So, like, you take the person and you drop real thin Ooh. glass through them. So it's like slides, usually six to eight of them, of each section of the person cut and then separated and then spread out so you can see it in a row, right? First the outer layer of skin and the expression and then, like, little flat slides. Mm -hmm. That's what every art piece is. Every one of them is one of the victims, including Genevieve, with an expression of pure horror on the dead face. This is fucked up, guys. Oh, oh. and he kind of throws up a little bit. <clears throat> Vega puts a hand on Sophie's <clears throat> shoulder. I'm sorry that you have to see this. Uh. For a better reference in Discord, the actual oh, we're gonna fuck the... Yep. <laughs> we're gonna fucking kill this bitch. Ugh. It's fuel for the fire. Is what it is. It is fuel for the fire. That people eventually unleash. Well, not only who did this, but, you... but who they were working for, because apparently they're working for someone. But you don't see any fishnet hotties in here. Virtue your eyes just focus on What you do work. see, and this is going to be for Drake, who is the most we got to get out of here of the group at the moment. You do see one of those little neon signs that says exit arrow. That's new. Can you look where it's pointing? All right. One of those push lever emergency doors. Hmm. Fire escape door. Very quickly, who has who knows correspondence? That'd be That's Gabriel. Coming. Okay, hey. Gabriel. Can you tell me if that's Genevieve? Like, if that's actually her? If I give you this, like, hair? Yes, you could. You really want to know? Yes, because as far as I know, we buried her body. So what's that? I mean, with this place, it's Tortured probably soul, perhaps. Her... Yeah. I, I think it's it's worth understanding. I, I think whatever. I think you might gain insight. Like, if you don't want to, like, maybe you open yourself up to horror beyond. Uh, that's fine. If you don't want to do that, that's fine. No, I I will. I just want to make sure that's something you really want to know. want to and need to. Two different things, I guess. You're not worried about visions, no. Gabriel, but you are going to have to go up there, open one of the vivisections, and touch the body. Possibly for a good ten minutes. <laughs> okay. Go ahead and describe the spell, and then roll Arate. Difficulty six. No. Difficulty five. 
So, well, this will be fun. I haven't actually thought about this kind of spell before. So, you see Gabriel walk up to what looks like Genevieve and places one hand on the face part, like on her cheek, and then the other hand, if 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 it has it in you know artistic allowance of course touches the heart yes um and places as as close as he can his forehead like probably on the slide of glass to get as close to touching her forehead as possible with his and you hear him pray Earth Mother, who holds us all in her embrace, allow me to find answers as to whether or not this is Genevieve herself, or if it's an illusion. And now I shall roll. Uh, oh yeah, Arite. And then if it's a success, I'll explain what it looks like, unless you want to. Well, again. I already had the spell card set up for this one, because I knew this one would have to be done. <laughs> uh, that's not a crit failure, so all that does is raise the difficulty. So roll again, but at difficulty six. How dare it. Yep, that's what happens when you fail on a spell roll. The spell card does it invisibly. Again, I say, how dare it. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, come on, internet. I, I can't God. aid with this uh, because I don't have correspondence, correct? Right. Five. Difficulty seven, roll again. We're adding the full mechanics now that we're our first few sessions in, by the way, meaning if you botch on a spill roll. Oh, God. Uh, All right. Even if, no. even if you save it with willpower. You gain a point of pair. Oh, I know why that's rolling zero, because I didn't click Arite, I clicked roll dice. Dear lord. <laughs> oh, you're right. Any None of the zeros did. So yeah, start back at difficulty five and roll again. Yeah, All these zeros are just, just rolling the formula with no dice, yeah. I... I... I use my brain sometimes. There we one go. One more time. You need one more success. Oh, God. That's a botch, so spend a point of willpower to save the spell and mark one paradox on your sheet. The journey has begun. <laughs> I'm very grateful, Gabriel. <laughs> Waiting on my internet to notice me, senpai. <laughs> That's how that phrase goes, right? Yes. Yes. Now it's difficulty six for real. Er, uh, yeah, six for real. But not six for fake, uh, right? <laughs> but not six for fake, correct. Damn. Oh, another botch. <laughs> okay. I, I'm in physical pain right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, there was part of the spell was time-related, but you were able to pick up on your time sense was trying to tell you something. But your hand slipped and squishes inside the heart and distracts the hell out of you. You drop the spell. And now you have two points of paradox. However, you do actually get the, the correspondence part. Uh, it is a perfect clone of Genevieve. But it's not like it was cloned in a cloning bat. It's like some kind of magic was used to create this Genevieve. It is, and is also not, Genevieve, whose hair you're holding. Hmm. So, like... Do you say this to the party? I... I pull Sophie aside. So... This... Is and is not Genevieve. 
um, kind of a clone, like made with magic, and the same with the lock of hair. It's it's her, but not really her. Like they grabbed her from a parallel universe. Drake, roll perception plus alertness to fifty six. Me. Drake. No, Drake. Oh, I he's, the only, he's the only one that can recover from your botch, so I'm gonna see if he's thought, eavesdropping accidentally. I thought you said break. <laughs> <laughs> Two successes. Drake is accidentally eavesdropping. Drake, you're the only one with this skill. Roll wits plus conspiracy theory. Rude. Nice. I'm going to spend one more point of willpower because I definitely want to get this information. Okay. Which is good. Good thing you did. One success. Bro, this is in your head. Okay. Talking to yourself. Sure. Bro, what if, like, what if, like, they took her out of her own timeline to make this her? So that is her and also not her at the same time. Bro. So, <laughs> so they're going in, they're killing people, but then snatching them from a different part in their timeline. As trophies. Display the kill, but still leave the body at the scene. Huh. Which only someone with the hubris of proper serial killer would do. Interesting. I want my trophy, but I also want to leave the gruesome There's display some displays. to fuck with the families. Yeah, 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 yeah. Awesome. So, can it be that scene where they're, like, kind of whispering and they're talking about that, and then, like, Drake <laughs> just kind of leans in from off frame? That's exactly what I want. Bros. <laughs> <laughs> and then I think this might be a situation where they're like snatching people out of the timeline right and then they're, they're wanting to get the best of both worlds right so just think about it you kill someone at the end of their life and then you go back in time and you kidnap them right and you kill them again you get double the pleasure for double your fun right this is some double mint shit alright so then you leave the body right so that the family and the cops have to see it. So you get your Jack the Ripper phase, right? But then you also you also get your you also get your Dahmer phase. So you get to keep the trophies at home, right? So they're like both. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Gabriel, you're like, yep, that's what my senses were trying to tell me. Are you trying to tell me that they killed Genevieve twice? Essentially. Yeah, it's oh, yeah. pretty much. Vega, Vega there looks there like Gabriel. A... He just nods. He's like, he looks over. Is there like, a version? Here's is there the, a version uh, of this in which Genevieve is still alive? Here's the thought that pops into your head, Sophie. They killed her twice. At least. And no, oh, this is some kind of no, loop effect where there's no, no escape. Yeah, effect. Sophie, think about it. Like, we're alive at all the... Every, every second we've ever been alive. That's an infinite amount of time that a killer could go back and snatch you and kill you. So, I think what I'm gonna do is, once we figure out who killed her, I'm gonna drag them back to this club and then through that doorway and just shove them through. She I points think to cool the hell idea. doorway. Hey, I got a real personal question to ask you, Sophie, and this is like, this is next level stuff, okay? Okay. How emotionally attached are you to, to these versions of these people? I mean, I loved my cousin. Okay. I don't know who the rest of these people are. All right. Okay. Question. Because if we want to start breaking down the psyche of this person, it's going to get real nasty in here real quick, because I'm about to do a couple of sidekicks to each one of these pieces and break all these people out of this glass. No, we should burn it. Okay. This is someone's trophy hall, and if you start doing that, they will come. Yeah, I know. You set a fire and you run. Okay. There's the exit sign. We want them out of this place. We want them coming after us. We want to get them working outside their normal MO, right? Cause chaos so that we know what their reaction is. We're going to rip our upper hand from the chaos we cause. That's how you win. That's how you take back control. 
snake. Be the snake. Oh my god, I... you are the dumbest, smartest man I have ever met. <laughs> <laughs> hey. As, like... hey, Leo. <laughs> Thanks, man. That's dope. You're welcome. <laughs> and with that, I'm just going to walk over and just start pushing over these pieces of glass. The people and... in the room are like, I actually start oh, helping wow. them, and I just. Good show, glass. good show. The people think this is part of the exhibit. God. Yeah, yeah these, these people are the kind of people that would make you ill. They're not mind control. They're just sick. Yeah. I, I help push down the glass. You wreck the room. Destroy it. Uh, There's a lot of broken glass and internal organs everywhere now. Like, I don't feel great about this one because it is people's, like, remains, but it's it's a means to an end on this one. Like, You're trying to accomplish a goal, yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You're not vampires. If, I'm not penalizing your humanity. So, these people are cheering? Well, they're exhibit cheering. Like, it's part of a show. Cool, cool, cool. I'll walk over to one and just be like, yeah, that's pretty cool, right? Yeah? Good show. Fascinating right, man? display. Yeah, I'm big display. Yeah. Hey, are you, you? You seem like you want to be an artist too, right? Like you, you got like a lot of expression to get out there. Is that right? I have no artistic skill now. Oh, I bet you do. And I want to grab him and throw him through one of the pieces of glass. Uh, you. You're wasting time, Drake. Let's go. We already did what we needed to do. Let's leave. The rest of the audience thinks that's part of the show, too. Mm -hmm. But uh, you're pretty sure you straight up killed that guy. <laughs> <laughs> because this is real life, even though it's a game. And Glass super murders you when you get thrown through it. <laughs> Internal organs are falling out. He looks mildly shocked. Let's go, Drake. We need to leave. Great. <clears throat> He made your point, though. <laughs> Good. Good job. All right, so we've, look, destroyed he... this, so we've destroyed this place. Yes, and that guy right looks very confused as he dies. <laughs> How did this I happen? I don't get it. Yeah, exactly. Uh... You run for the emergency exit, push your way through. No alarm goes off like it would if it was a store. Gotcha. And you're back outside, but you're on the other side of the building, not with the front door you came in through. Okay. And you're back in the street. Do we or see a, Bouncer? Or a really good facsimile of it. Do we see Bouncer Lady anywhere? No. That's good. <laughs> is Tam still with us? Yes. Yes. Although okay. Tam is now clinging to Leo and Sophie and using them as a shield between Tam and Drake. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. It's okay. Cool. He, like, that was awful in there. Like, we can all agree that was awful. We got you, Tam. When we get back, we're going to play video games. Like, I'm pretty sure yeah, I'm just high. This is all some kind of weird high nightmare. But I'm going to sex you two up, so I don't care. Uh -huh. Nightmare and high, uh, says the changeling. Dude, I got some, What's a changeling? I got some <laughs> Not a word they use for themselves. Nothing. I got some dope drugs we're gonna take, uh, Tam. It's gonna be amazing. Yeah, do you do you wanna come with us or should we drop you off somewhere else? Oh, I'm going home with you. Okay. <laughs> Alright. You return to the chantry? That's yeah, a I don't think uh Well first, I pull them aside. Lady... First I, I, I put go. my foot down before we get into the car, I'm like, listen. Are you truly intending to bring Tam into the Chantry to use as bait? Because if that's not what you're intending to do, that is what you're actually doing by bringing them with us. Bait for who? For the killer. How is Tam bait? I thought we were the bait. We're being watched, and if we're going to be hunting for this thing, for this killer, then they're as fair game as we are. We can't take them with us. 
should we protect him? Well, You're not sure if okay. he's more or less safe outside of your purview I now think, that it's clear he's with you. But I definitely think, though, that he could have his uses if we need him as well. Because I believe they have a very good illusion powers and shit. You want to use them. This. Don't make sure you think that. I, I don't. That's the point <laughs> I'm trying to make. Obviously, he made... He, I object to using them. Go ahead, Father Vega. I'm just like, I object to any use of this person. They are innocent in this. They have... We would be the ones to put ourselves in danger, not All right. Not them. How about this? Three of you go to the Shantry. Leo and I are going to take him somewhere safe, neutral ground. We'll explain to him as much as we can about what's going on and let him make his own decision. Correct. I like that idea. You, uh, do your kind have a gentry, Tim? My kind? Uh, d- <laughs> Faye! I think. Yeah, you followed us there. We know you watched us all go in the building. <laughs> Alright. Uh, Tim? <laughs> Full disclosure, um, my cousin was killed a while ago. She was a mage like me. Someone is hunting mages. They might have caught your scent too. We can try to keep you safe, but I don't know what resources you have to protect yourself. Tam seems much more worried about you than anything you said about them. But Tam says... I'm sure you've got some cool wizard base. And I really like Harry Potter, so I dig it. Are you Hufflepuff? Anyways, uh, we got a cool base too. So I don't know. Probably equally safe. Okay. Can I go to your place, Tam? Like, I want to know what Tam's fort looks like, man. I don't care where we bang. <laughs> I agree. We- well, we've been there before. It was the Peabody building, remember? It was yeah, the castle but we didn't get to go in. Oh, I want to okay. go in. I want to know what his crib looks like. So is that the plan? The two of you are going to escort Tam back to uh, whatever Faye called their house? Uh, I mean, I- I'm going to leave that choice up to Tam. Yep. But, uh... Tam's leaving that choice up to you. Oh, okay, fine. Uh, all right, homies, if I can just say something real quick, like, because we kind of got to go, I don't think we should be splitting up considering we just kind of fucked up that Nefandi's place and we're hoping that they come after us. So if we're split Second up, that. that's two fronts we're going to have to protect against. If y'all want to, you know, bone one out at the Chantry, that's fine. Let's go. The rooms are soundproofed. Magically. Uh, Father Vega is just thinking, I mean, like, if... I got this person killed, and now I'm going to get them killed again. <laughs> uh, you know, as long as you don't mind us bringing a magically talented non-mage to the chain tree. Yeah. <laughs> the player doesn't What's the like worst that, that could happen, guys? Come on. <laughs> the player does not like that very much, but He honestly, doesn't like that, but Drake is like, okay. Drake's like, y'all just trying to get down. It's cool. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, I'd rather someone familiar with magic than totally not. A random not. human being that. No, uh, like our our assistants at the Chantry who have no idea about magic, and we kind of have to go hush-hush when they come around. You know, it's, uh, I don't know. More innocence, yeah. yeah. Tam, I think, I think Tam, he's cool. I think we'll be okay. So... You all pile in the SUV with Tam. You're driving home. It's probably quiet and somber, and you're about halfway there. Well, so uh, on the way there, I will give Tam a little more details, but like, okay, so here's all the shit that we're involved in. Okay. I I will leave out that he was murdered, (laughs) because I'm not quite sure how to tell him Well, I don't think we even know that. Probably for the best. Probably for the Um, best. Halfway back to the house in a 
lull in the conversation when everyone's like, it's awkward to talk about this because we all feel bad for Sophie. And there's like, like a quiet moment. You all turn to say something at the exact same moment when headlights and my favorite thing, crunching metal, impact, flipping through the air as somebody sideswipes you at 70 miles an hour out of nowhere. It's a good thing you didn't split oh. up. <laughs> That's where we pause till next week. <laughs> Shit. That'd be awesome. Yeah, you all owe yeah. Steve because I was totally going to sideswipe just the two of you with him. Oh, dang. <laughs> and this is why it's Thank important, you, kids, to always wear your seatbelts in Tyler's games. <laughs> Bell seekers. Go ahead, Steve. I was going to say, it's been a while since we've had a car wreck in Tyler's game. Yep. Still trying to figure out how best to do that on Tuesday without hurting horses. I'm working on it. <laughs> well, seekers, we heard the screams from the cellar. Where hidden stairs take us to Inferno. We smelled the blood and burnt flesh from those sacrificed to long forgotten gods. We saw glimpses from beyond the veil, but now we must return to fit the slumber until next week when we will return to White Walls. We thank you for journeying, journeying with us and hope to see you again next week. Don't forget to click follow here on Twitch and click subscribe and the bell on YouTube. We appreciate you all. Special thanks to our Patreons, especially Dave, Don Arnetto, and Funky Thunder. We love you. Thanks to all our Twitch subscribers as well. You guys help make our quality better, our cosplay sharper, and feed all the cats and dogs. Thanks also to Helmgast, Tonic Path Publishing, White Wolf, and Modiphius for the awesome games we use in this story. As well as Dark Somnium Music, Darren Curtis Music, Sapphic Music, and Helmgast for the Divinity Original Sin soundtrack. You'll see links in a minute. Awaken Seekers of Enlightenment, tell us who you are, who you played tonight, and the next time people can catch you with us and elsewhere. Hello everybody, uh, I am Steve. You can find me on the internet at Voodoo Arcade. Tonight I played Drake, the... hold on. Akashiyana Mage. Couldn't remember that at the beginning. I had to pull it back up. So yes, um, I played Punch Man, who did more than punching tonight. Uh, next time you'll find me <clears throat> here at Vocal Tales is tomorrow, playing Cyberpunk with Eric the Dope. I will tell you too, it's Inferno, so it's coming back, but you did straight up kill that uh, Purgatide. Nice! Fuck yeah! <laughs> kill those <Next>. <laughs> Hey everybody, I have been playing Gabriel this evening, the Cult of Ecstasy mage who uh, is impressed with how motivational speakery that Drake can be. You can find me all <laughs> over the internet as Changeling Ever because I am Ever with the pronouns of they, them. And you can also find me on Etsy at Neat and Co Designs, as in Hey Ever, that's a neat spinner ring. And you can find me playing tomorrow evening Cyberpunk Red, my solo named Vector, who does the slicey and the dicey. And I'm Eric at Maron Recluse on Twitter. Uh, I was playing Jose Vega. Uh, you can catch me tomorrow for uh, running Cyberpunk Red. Uh, hello, my name is Rachel. I was playing Sophie. You can find me Stolen Fires. Uh, you will see me Tuesday at Victoria and Mage. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to that one. Uh, Wednesday, I will be Plastic Age Plays. We're going to be playing Savage World Riffs. That should be a lot of fun. And then on Thursday, I'm going to be on the Onyx Path channel running a Changeling the Dreaming game. It's a lot of fun. Uh, the last game ended with uh, one of the only fairies in the whole world who knows Sovereign alone in a room with Queen Victoria. We heard about that from Harry. <laughs> Gonna change the entire course of the Order of Reasons history. Yup. I mean, go they, already, they already <laughs> ordered the Fourth Crusades. <laughs> Hello. Um, my name is Jared, and you can find me at Real life Jared everywhere. I mostly play on Sundays, so um, you'll find me playing video games um, with Sean in the morning on Sundays. I will be on next week. I promise you on that. Um, but on that, you'll also find me on Sunday nights playing this game here as well. So, yeah, that's my life. All right, and now for the ride or die viewers, it's vote time. Viewers, you can vote for any one player each session. The player who gets your vote gain a bonus willpower. 
to either restore what they use tonight or if they're full, spend in a future session without having to actually check the box. Cast your votes as usual. Can restore quintessence, awareness, or stability now that you're all starting to lose it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. In the normal order, begin. Oh, man. Uh, tonight's always tough, but I'm going to have to go with Eric, uh, Father Vega, for giving in to his dark side for the first time I can remember. Um, no. And, yep. and uh, you know, keeping it footloose. <laughs> always a tough decision, but you all know that already, don't you? Uh, yes. Okay. I am going to... <laughs> I'm going to give mine to Steve. Because of the unexpected motivational, <laughs> emotional cheerleading done by Drake, who is supposed to be this fighty badass, but he's <laughs> kind of wholesome now? I don't understand, but I like it. That was funny. Thank you. I have to go. I have to give it to Steve for the typhoon kick. <laughs> <laughs> typhoon kicking the Cenobite, like that was, yeah. Just pissing <laughs> off. Purgatide. Purgatide. Yes, <laughs> sure. Yes, that thing. They uh, totally so not Cenobites. <laughs> uh, I would like to give mine to Ever, uh, Gabriel, uh, taking on hardship on uh, Sophie's behalf. As he accumulates two dots of paradox to do the spell oh, that she asked him to right. do. I, there was two? I thought it was one. Two botches. Oh, shit. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, but that spell did not go well. I also got to give it to Everett, too. I don't know. Yeah, I'll give it to Everett. Um, I really liked the, uh, <laughs> the explanation she had for the spell that she did. I thought it was really cool. So. Oh, Gabriel's a guy. Sorry, Gabriel, my bad. Excellent. Another thing I always forget to do live and always end up doing after the show. Uh, this session, four XP each, because your dumbasses went to hell to be heroes. You get a bonus <laughs> plus one. <laughs> it was awful. That, that was not what you were supposed to do, but that, that, that worked out well for me. Because your dumbasses went to hell. <laughs> now, dear audience, we must return you to your restless sleep until next week. Happy nightmares. Bye.